This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to an adventure fantasy novel. The Desolate Era. Book 8, Rain Dragon Guard. Chapter 1, Jade Sea. The temperament of the black-robed maiden, Yu Wei, was something Ji Ning couldn't quite get a grasp on. However, when he thought about how many times the white-haired elder had accepted the black-white pellets and liquefied elemental essence on his behalf, Ning felt absolutely delighted. In addition, this series of Tao debates had also served as a form of baptism. He could sense that he had evolved, somehow. Senior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning. A voice rang out in celebration. Ning turned to look, only to see the skinny, small, white-robed Mu North Sun charging over with incomparable excitement. He hurriedly howled, Senior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning, you are way too powerful. You consecutively defeated so many Wanxiang adepts, and even that seemingly powerful Northmont Black Current was defeated by you. Just now, I asked Senior Apprentice Sister Winter Ein, that Senior Apprentice Sister Yu Wei who defeated you is a reincarnated immortal, and one who has trained for ten years more than we have, and entered the school long before us. Don't worry, I'm not upset, Ning laughed. North Sun was still incomparably excited. In short, you are way too powerful. I heard senior apprentice sister Winterein say that it is extremely rare to see someone like you, and that even in the black-white college, you can be considered a supreme genius. Perhaps, in a few thousand years or a few tens of thousands of years, the entire black-white college will have firmly memorized your name. Ning shook his head. You praise me overmuch. Suddenly, he heard voices ring out from the side. Uncle Master Headmaster. Uncle Master Headmaster. A chorus of voices called out. The group of primal Taoists, who had arrived soundlessly and without announcement and who had been hiding themselves, all walked over at this point in time. All of you can go back now. Taoist Jade C, who was walking at the head of the group, said calmly, Ji Ning, stay behind. Yes. Quite a few members of the third generation still wanted to converse with Ning, and at least ensure that Ning knew their names. This was because everyone understood something, given how powerful he had shown himself to be, so shortly after entering the school, so long as he didn't die, he would definitely be a truly influential figure of Stillwater Commandery. However, since the headmaster had given the order, they all naturally departed. Ji Ning? Senior apprentice brother Holy Fire gave Ning a deep look, memorizing him. Intriguing, intriguing. More and more intriguing. The fat, Sloppy-looking youth had a look of delight on his face. He lazily ambled away. Ning said to the nearby North Sun, Junior Apprentice Brother North Sun, you go back as well. North Sun nodded. All right. He immediately departed alongside Winterine. Soon, no one was left in the entire Dao Debate Palace aside from the primal Taoists and Ji Ning, as well as the immortals who had hidden themselves in the corner. Ji Ning. Daoist Jade C looked at Ning, and the primal Taoists next to him looked at Ning as well, their eyes filled with curiosity. Uncle Master Headmaster, Ning acknowledged respectfully. Do you know what a sword immortal is? Daoist Jade C asked. Ning replied, startled, sword immortals. Some immortals who use flying swords in extremely powerful ways are addressed respectfully by others in this manner, I believe. Can it be that this term has a special meaning? Even up till now, Ning still wasn't quite sure as to what the term Sword Immortal truly meant. Uncle Master Jinsai didn't tell you? Daoist Jade C seemed to have thought of something as he spoke. Ning replied, Master didn't discuss Sword Immortals with me in detail. He only provided me with guidance regarding sword arts. He told me to finish mastering the Neo Tripartite Lotus Sword, and the first stance of the Three Foot Sword, then to seek him out again. Daoist Jade C nodded. That explains it, then. If one is capable of executing the first stance of the three-foot sword, then one has already become a sword immortal. You should know that this world is filled with many Daos, yes? Yes, I do. Ning nodded. In his heart, he added, that he also knew that the most supreme figure of the three realms, Maiden Yuwa, had comprehended 84,000 different Daos. But of course, this was according to what he had heard in the past from the Lord of Chui Palace. The Daos are numerous beyond counting. Daoist Jade C looked at Ning. 
In addition, there are different levels of Tao as well. Ning's ears twitched. Different levels of Tao? Right. Taoist Jade C nodded. The Tao is divided into the supreme, heavenly Taoist, the extremely exalted, grand Taoist, and the ordinary Taoist. The heavenly Taoist, the grand Taoist, and Tao? Ning held his breath. Not even his master had discussed these things with him in detail. The heavenly Taoists are the most fundamental of Taoists, and they are the underpinning of the functioning of the cosmos. They are incomparably supreme. For example, the five elements. After Pangu established the universe, the universe was formed from the most basic of particles, the five elements. Normally, when we talk about swearing an oath by the Tao of the heavens, or making an oath of blood to the Tao of the heavens, we are swearing an oath to the heavenly Taoists. The heavenly Taoists uphold the functioning of the universe, and once we violate an oath sworn to them, they will naturally punish us. No one can escape the punishment of the Taoists of the heavens. This is the most supreme of Taoists. Ning was shocked and stunned. According to the legends, so long as one can comprehend a heavenly Tao, then one will become one of the most incomparably exalted figures of the three realms. Taoist Jadasiya's eyes were filled with a boundless eagerness as well, and the gazes of the primal Taoists next to him became lost and dreamy as well. To them, the heavenly Taoists were legends and myths. But of course, I've never even heard of anyone who comprehended a heavenly Tao. Taoist Jade C laughed as he looked at Ning. Never, not even in any of the legends or stories. Ning sighed to himself. Right. Heavenly Taoists. When immortal practitioners swore an oath, they would do so towards the Tao of the heavens. It was the Taoists of the heavens which upheld the functioning of the entire three realms. It was naturally incomparably exalted. One level lower than the heavenly Taoists are the Grand Taoists. Taoist Jade C looked towards Ji Ning. Every single Grand Tao is also extremely exalted, and it is extremely difficult to even gain an initial insight into them. On a level lower than the Grand Taoists are the most numerous, ordinary Taoists. Taoist Jade C looked at Ji Ning. Your Tao of rainwater, and the Taoists of freezing ice, mystic ice, and the like, these are all ordinary Taoists. Ning nodded. He now understood that Taoists were divided into levels as well. Heavenly Taoists were the most supreme, the fundamental Taoists which underpinned the cosmos. The Tao of the Sword, however, is one of the Grand Taoists. Taoist Jade C looked towards Ning. Everyone who has embarked upon the Tao of the Sword is known as a Sword Immortal. Ah? Uh? Ning stared. The Tao of the Sword was one of the Grand Taoists. He had actually embarked onto the path of a Grand Tao. To gain an initial insight into the Tao of the Sword, one must clearly develop and comprehend one's sword heart and make it lustrous. Taoist Jade C looked towards Ji Ning. This is also the first stance of the three-foot sword. You need to have a heart which is supremely, sincerely devoted to the sword, and you need to make that sword heart of yours lustrous, the difficulty of doing this is even greater than reaching the Tao domain level of your Tao of rainwater. Ning nodded in acknowledgement. It was, indeed, a bit harder to reach the lustrous sword heart level than to develop his rainwater sword domain. This is the difference in Taoists. It is even harder to gain an initial insight into a Grand Tao than it is to reach the Tao domain level in an ordinary Tao. Taoist Jade C stared at Ning, his gaze blazing. This is also why you were able to defeat even Northmont Black Current, who has reached the level of possessing five Tao domains. It is because the Tao you comprehended is a Grand Tao. Although he has comprehended many, they are all lesser Taoists. In addition, the Tao of the Sword, even amongst the Grand Taoists, is known as the Grand Tao with the greatest offensive combat potential. Sword Immortals are legendary for their combat power as well. In our Black-White College, including you, we only have a total of two Sword Immortals, Daoist Jadesi said. One is you, with the other being your master, Uncle Master Dianzai. Ning nodded. Because you have gained an insight into the Grand Tao of the Sword, our Black-White College shall bestow upon you 2,000 Black-White Pellets. Daoist Jade C took out a jade bottle, handing it over to Ning. Ning was instantly overjoyed. 2,000 Black-White Pellets? 
When his master had bestowed him with black-white pellets, he had informed Ning that he would receive a thousand black-white pellets for reaching the Tao domain level, and just two thousand black-white pellets for his soul reaching the divine sense level. Generally speaking, only primal Taoists would have a soul at the divine sense level. And yet, just gaining an initial insight into a grand Tao merited a similar award of two thousand black-white pellets. Why are there no records of this within the black and white book? Ning hurriedly asked. The black and white book has quite a few records regarding various rewards of black white pellets, such as for joining the rain dragon guard, becoming a two clawed rain dragon guard, a three clawed rain dragon guard, why aren't there any records regarding becoming a sword immortal? Heavenly Das. Grand Das. Ordinary Das. The fact that there are these differences is not something which is to be carelessly exposed. Daoist Jade C looked towards Ning. If you hadn't comprehended them for yourself and we told you of them, it would actually harm you by affecting your Tao heart. You would be unwilling to go comprehend an ordinary Tao, and would focus on trying to master a grand Tao. But do you think a grand Tao is so easily comprehended? If you aren't already at that level, letting you know about the levels will harm you for no benefit. Ning now understood. Even us. Daoist Jade C looked at the crowd of primal Taoists. Even we only learned about this matter after we finished comprehending a complete Tao path. Now that we have mastered a complete Tao path, the next step for us is to comprehend a Grand Tao. Ning now understood. Grand Taoists are extremely hard to understand. Even in our black-white college, and even for the likes of Senior Northwalker, there has never been anyone who has completely and thoroughly mastered a Grand Tao. Taoist Jade C looked towards Ning. The path of mastering a Grand Tao is incomparably more difficult than the path of mastering an ordinary Tao, thousands of times more difficult. However, the power of a Grand Tao is also countless times greater. You must diligently train and not slacken off in the slightest. Yes. Ning nodded with solemnity. All right. With regards to Sword Immortals, if you have any questions, go ask your master. In the entire black-white college, only your master is capable of truly teaching you. Daoist Jade C laughed, then turned and left. Ji Ning, it is quite rare for me to officiate over a recruitment ceremony, and yet when I did, I ended up taking you in, ha ha ha. Daoist Wu Xiao and the others all chatted for a bit with Ning as well. Every single one of them spoke with Ning for a bit. Clearly, as they saw it, in a few decades, or perhaps in a century, Ning would be on a completely equal level to them. Shortly afterwards, the primal Taoists all departed. Only now did Ning let out a sigh of relief. Heavenly Daos? Grand Daos? Daos? Ning suddenly thought of something. The creator of the underwater estate even had many immortal ranked magic treasures and pure young magic treasures. I also heard that he was a fiend god who was born during the era of primal chaos, before the creation of the universe, and that he was one of the major powers of the three realms. Even the star-seizing hand he developed was so powerful, he most assuredly must have comprehended a grand Tao. Only, I wonder if Daoist Three Lives was able to comprehend a heavenly Tao. Well, enough of that. 2000 Black-White Pellets Ning looked at the jade bottle in his hands. And I earned quite a few black-white pellets during the Tao debates as well. Should I go to the Tao repository vault to exchange them for techniques? Ning began to ponder. For divine abilities? Or for the soul shaker art? Right at this moment, a voice was transmitted towards him. Ji Ning. This voice echoed in his mind. Master. Ning hurriedly looked around. Go back and calm your mind and focus on your training. You must solidify your foundation to fully reap the gains from these Tao debates. I trust you will make even more advancements if you do. Three days later, come and see me. Immortal Jiansai's voice rang out in Ning's mind. As for the four immortals in the corner of the room, Immortal Jiansai, the short elder, the juvenile child, and the crowned, bearded elder all gave Ning a final look before disappearing into thin air. Ning stared around within the Tao debate palace, but saw no one else present. Still, he acknowledged respectfully, yes, master. Ning immediately boarded his flying boat. Transforming into a streak of light, 
he flew out of the Tao Debate Palace and returned to his dark north peak. He was going to calm his heart and solidify the gains he had recently reaped. Chapter 2, Northmont Black Tiger Style The flying boat soared through the skies, entering the dark north peak's estate. Senior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning Forgard, Cloud Ship, and Cloud Jade, the three Zifu disciples, all called out with respect. The whitewater hound next to them looked towards Ning as well, and Ning grinned towards him. Uncle White, I'm going to go into my private training room to engage in some closed-door training. Only call me if there is something extremely important. The whitewater hound nodded. Ning then went directly into his private training room. Cloud Jade nibbled on her lips as she stared at Ning. He just glanced at me. He didn't even give me a good look. Humph. Back in the tribe, there were so many people who wanted to become Tao companions with me. But this senior apprentice brother Ji Ning hasn't even engaged in a proper conversation with me. Cloud Jade's alluring charm was indeed tremendous. The fox spirits and other beautiful maidservants which Ning had seen in the carefree caverns were all inferior to her. Even Nine Lotus was slightly inferior to her. The only one comparable to her was that reincarnated immortal, the Rainbow Flame Fairy, Yue. No wonder Cloud Jade had always been self-confident. She naturally wanted to reel in this Disciples of the Black-White College. This Ji Ning, in her mind, truly was the best selection for her to become Tao companions with. But unfortunately, up till now, Ji Ning had never said a word to her. I refuse to believe it. Cloud Jade mused to herself silently. I wonder how the battles at the Tao Debate Palace went. Cloud Ship, by her side, had a look of anticipation in his shining eyes. None of us know, Forgard said gravely. Cloud Ship glanced at Forgard, then pursed his lips. Within the private training room. Ning sat there in the lotus position, streaks of sword energy flying around him, occasionally chopping, occasionally stabbing, occasionally blocking. One stance after another came out, they appeared ordinary, but they contained a truly heart-shaking fierceness to them. Suddenly, all of the sword energies around him vanished. Phew. A hint of a smile appeared on Ning's face. I've spent an entire night training, and I have indeed made further gains, as well as solidified my previous insights. The Grand Tao of the Sword? Sword Immortal? A look of anticipation was in Ning's eyes. Whoosh! Ning rose to his feet, and the stone door opened with a rumble. Soon, he arrived outside the courtyard. There was a hint of light in the skies. Ning stood there in the courtyard, and as he took in a deep breath of air, filled with dense amounts of natural, elemental energy, he felt all the happier. Senior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning A soft voice suddenly rang out nearby. Ning turned to look. It was Cloud Jade, dressed in a light pink Daoist robe. Although the robe was rather loose and large, on her incomparably ravishing body, it gave an alluring feeling that was both faint and bone-deep. Her long black hair was simply combed, but it also gave off a natural, magnetic aura. She truly is a lovely person. Why in the world did Bai Wei have her come and be my retainer? Ning mused to himself. Although Cloud Jade was indeed exquisite in her appearance, what Ning wanted was to be truly carefree and unbound. How could he so casually select a Tao companion? Even if he were to choose one, it would be an incomparably major affair. For now, at least, this Cloud Jade hadn't moved Ning's heart in the slightest. I haven't had a chance to thank you yet, Senior Apprentice Brother, for giving me the chance to enter your service and join the Black White College. Cloud Jade's willowy, graceful body curtsied in a show of respect. Ning nodded gently. Suddenly, a figure ran over from outside. It was a young servant. The young servant couldn't help but glance towards that exalted, insurpassably seductive immortal practitioner, Cloud Jade, but then he hurriedly said in a nervous manner, Master, someone is outside, and he claims to be your senior apprentice brother. He's right at the door. He's already been waiting for the amount of time needed to boil a kettle of tea. Oh? Ning nodded, then laughed and said in clear voice, Which senior apprentice brother is it, might I ask? I've neglected you by making you wait here for so long, senior apprentice brother. Please, come in, quickly. 
Hurry and go prepare refreshments, Ning said, looking at the nearby Cloud Jade. All right. Cloud Jade hurriedly bowed, then quickly departed. The ordinary, mortal youth had cold sweat rolling down his back. He hurriedly left as well. Just now, when he had taken a secret glance at that unsurpassingly alluring beauty, Cloud Jade, he felt as though he had seen one of the legendary fairies. At the same time, he sighed to himself, if I could have a fairy like her as my woman, even if I could only live for an hour, I would be satisfied. And yet, Master doesn't even care about a maiden like her at all. Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning A youth dressed in a black Daoist robe came walking in. His eyes seemed to contain the stars in them, and a smile was on his face. I previously met you both during the grand entrance ceremony as well as the Tao Debate Palace, but I hadn't had the chance to say anything to you. My name is Hu Yongchun, and my Daoist title is the same as my name, Yongchun, meaning Everspring. Dot. Senior Apprentice Brother Everspring, please come in. Ning, as an immortal practitioner, had an incomparably perfect memory. He remembered that during the Tao debates, this Everspring had been by the side of the fat, sloppy-looking youth. Someone who was able to stand directly next to that youth was most likely one of the fairly talented Wanxiang adepts of the college. The two fellow disciples sat there facing each other, while Cloud J delivered fine wine and fruits to them. Junior Apprentice Brother, you have quite a lovely lady here. Everspring laughed as he delivered a few words of praise, and Cloud Jade's face turned slightly red. Ning laughed. She's just taking the chance to train under my service. Oh. Everspring nodded. He immediately noted that this junior apprentice brother of his seemed to hold no interest at all in this devilishly attractive maiden, and so he didn't mention her any further. Cloud Jade served the two, watching as Ji Ning and Everspring, two formal disciples of the Black White College, chatted and laughed amongst themselves. At first, she had been filled with eagerness, but towards the end, she felt vaguely heartsick. At first, Everspring had praised her beauty, but afterwards, both he and her own master, Ji Ning, had completely focused on their conversation, not sparing so much as a glance for her. Both of them were blessed by the heavens with talent, clearly, they didn't care about her appearance. This truly hurt her heart. Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning Suddenly, a voice rang out from outside. Another one, Ning mused to himself. The reason why he had left the private training room so early today was precisely because he realized that his performance during the Tao debates had probably attracted the attention of quite a few fellow disciples, who would come in order to make friends with him. In turn, the more friends he had amongst his fellow disciples, the better it would be for him. The formal disciples of the Black White College, after all, were people who outsiders would view as extremely hard to befriend, even if they wanted to. One formal disciple after another arrived, either alone or in pairs or triplets, causing the courtyard to become quite rowdy. Every so often, one of them would leave, but there would always be from three to five people within the courtyard. Cloud Jade, as his female servant, naturally served them personally. What hurt her the most was, aside from those senior apprentices who offered her a kind word of praise, there was only a single senior apprentice brother out of the twenty-plus formal disciples who gave her so much as a close look. That senior apprentice brother's Taoist title was, Joy Bliss. According to what he said, he delighted in tandem training. These disciples of the Black White College, aside from that one that likes to engage in tandem training, truly all have extraordinary Tao hearts. In the end, Cloud Jade could only sigh to herself in amazement. Indeed, everyone capable of joining the Black White College was a peerless talent. And, from the sounds of it, her own master, Ji Ning, was one of the most outstanding members of this group of peerless talents, someone who could be described as a monster. This was why so many fellow apprentice brothers and apprentice sisters had come to befriend him. Junior apprentice brother Ji Ning, I brought two of my junior apprentice sisters over as well would you be willing to meet them? A soft voice rang out, and instantly, Ji Ning and the two people he was chatting with turned their heads. They soon saw three streaks of light moving towards them through the air from afar. Senior Apprentice Sister Nine Lotus, since you wish to meet with me, how would I dare refuse? Ning raised his head to stare at Nine Lotus, high in the sky. Nine Lotus was accompanied by a lovely woman dressed in red robes as well as a silver-robed maiden with a fierce aura. The three women landed from the skies at the same time. 
They, upon seeing these three senior apprentice sisters descend, Cloud Jade suddenly had a sense of self-contempt in her heart. The bearing and aura of these three, only they were truly worthy of being referred to as fairies. This is Junior Apprentice Sister Ching Ching, while this is Junior Apprentice Sister Whitewater. Nine Lotus laughed as she looked towards Ning. Greetings to you, Senior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning. Both the willowy, red-robed woman and the silver-robed maiden looked towards Ning. Only with the arrival of nightfall did Ning's dark north peak return to its usual calm. His fellow disciples had all left. Only, one more person had arrived. It was Northmont Bai Wei. Bai Wei, sit. Ning and Bai Wei sat down. Bai Wei smiled and said, I knew that you would definitely be very busy today, and that quite a few of your colleagues would definitely come visit you. So, I intentionally waited until it was almost dark before coming. Bai Wei, you truly are formidable, Ning said in praise. Bai Wei laughed loudly. How could I not guess that this would happen? Right, today, I've come at the orders of my father. Ning was startled. Your father? Northmont Black Tiger, the intimidating aura of that man filled Ning with fear. He definitely wasn't inferior to the headmaster of the Black White College, and he was a man with an exceptionally dominating, overbearing aura. One of the candidates to be the next Marquis of Stillwater. You've come here because... Ning was stunned. Clap, clap. Bai Wei clapped his hands twice. Instantly, the two Zifu disciple servants standing behind him immediately moved forward. They each took out multiple black jade platters from their storage-type magic treasures. These black jade platters were all engraved with the exquisite carving of a black tiger, and the platters themselves were crystal clear, incomparably beautiful works of art. Atop each platter, there were multiple items. There were, in total, six black jade platters. They had on them a pair of jade bottles, a small boat, a set of black wings, and two sets of flying swords that were the size of sewing needles. There are two sets of flying swords. One has 72 flying swords, while the other has 18. They are all excellent mortal-ranked flying swords. This set of black wings, is a high-grade mortal-ranked wing-type magic treasure. This boat is a top-grade flying magic treasure. This jade bottle holds a miasma gas treasure, which is a type of fleeing treasure. This other jade bottle holds 500 kilograms of liquefied elemental essence. Bai Wei said, with composure and assurance, accept all of these things. Ning was poleaxed. He could clearly tell that these were all extraordinary gifts. Aside from the set of black wings, which was slightly poorer, the others were extremely valuable. This, how can I accept this? Ning hurriedly refused. It's too expensive. My father ordered me to come here, and I've already delivered the items. Everything else has nothing to do with me. Bai Wei waved his hands and said, you don't have to be modest. You and my father have had the chance to meet each other, and my father has given these congratulatory gifts with good intentions. Just accept them. Ning hesitated momentarily. Since Bai Wei and himself were good friends, there now existed an irreversible relationship between himself and Northmont Black Tiger's estate. Since that was the case, he might as well accept them. All right. Ning nodded. That's more like it. No point in not accepting my father's things, and these aren't that important for someone like him, Bai Wei said. Oh, right. You asked me to search for that Meng Rock. I've already found him. It's true, he hasn't been able to join any sect at all. Do you want for me to send someone to deliver him directly to the Black White College? Chapter 3, Our Master, Ji Ning Meng Rock? Ning's eyes lit up. Although he had only known Rock for a few days when they met on the way to Stillwater City, he felt extremely well disposed towards Rock. In addition, the fact that he was willing to sacrifice his own life for others meant that he was someone worthy of Ning's assistance. Cloudship. Ning called out in a high voice. Cloudship soon hurried over, bowing and saying with respect, Senior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning, you wanted me? Ning nodded, then pointed to the nearby Northmont Bai Wei. Bai Wei, in a short while, lead this Cloudship and arrange for someone to send Cloudship to Meng Roche's place. Let Cloudship bring Rock back to the Black White College. 
All right. Bai Wei nodded. Ning looked towards Cloudship. Cloudship, do you hear and understand? The reason why he wanted Cloudship to go was because he could tell that Cloudship was a lively fellow who was able to make snap decisions based on the actual situation. Whatever Ning asked him to do, he would definitely do perfectly well. Cloudship immediately nodded. Senior apprentice brother Ji Ning, don't worry. I will definitely invite Meng Rock over. Good. Only now did Ning nod. Bai Wei laughed. I've carried out my father's tasks as well. Next are the gifts that I personally prepared for you. Bai Wei, what are you? Ning hurriedly moved to refuse, but Bai Wei immediately interjected, don't decline. You and I are brothers. You have entered the Black-White College, and had a glorious performance at the Tao debate. As your brother, how can I not prepare a congratulatory gift? Don't worry, because of the restrictions which father placed on me, I'm not as wealthy or as generous as father, and my gift isn't that valuable. Ning let out a laugh. If Bai Wei had already put things this way, what else could he, Ning, do? Bai Wei waved his hand, and a thick, seemingly ordinary-looking book appeared. Although this book seemed to be made from excellent materials, Ning couldn't notice anything special about it at first glance. I imagine that quite soon, you'll be going out to do some adventuring. Immortal practitioners all must be tempered by countless life and death experiences. Only then will we be able to walk farther on our immortal paths. Bai Wei laughed and continued, thus, I prepared a map for you. This is a map of the entire Xia dynasty. Ning called out in shock the entire Xia dynasty? The Xia dynasty was unimaginably vast. Don't get too excited. The Xia dynasty is enormous, and this map only goes into detail regarding our Stillwater commandery. It only has some rough information regarding the distant places of the vast Xia dynasty, which is thousands of times larger than our commandery. At least, however, you won't get lost. Bai Wei was a bit resigned. A detailed map of the entire Xia dynasty is something which even I don't have access to. Ning sighed inwardly. To immortal practitioners who went out adventuring, the importance of a good map was unquestionable. This was because there were simply far too many mysteries, dangers, and terrifying locations in this vast world. If one moved about blindly and ignorantly, one might accidentally charge into a fatal area. If that happened, one really would die a miserable death. Now that I've done what I need to, it's time for me to leave. Bai Wei rose and laughed, I know that for a genius like you, your training time is quite precious. Ning rose to his feet as well and asked, leaving so soon? Your black-white college is within Stillwater City. I can come any time. Bai Wei led his servants in Cloudship, then quickly departed. Ning watched as Bai Wei and the others transformed into streaks of light and departed. Only now did he lower his head to stare at the six jade platters of treasures that were before him. My, lesser thousand swords formation, just so happened to be lacking in swords, and now I've received two sets of them. Ning stared at the two sets of flying swords, one a set of 72, the other a set of 18. The set of 18 swords in particular appeared to be all exceptionally fine flying swords. Although I haven't used the, lesser thousand swords formation, Many times, Northmont Black Tiger clearly knew long ago that I need a large number of flying swords. He really lives up to his reputation as being a potential candidate for the next Marquis of Stillwater. His information really is reliable. As a Zifu disciple, it should be too hard for me to cobble together 700 or so mortal ranked flying swords. But once I reach the Wanxiang Adept level, I'll need 700 or so earth ranked flying swords. As a primal Daoist, I'll need heaven-ranked flying swords. Ning sighed to himself. The lesser thousand swords formation was something which caused even a mortal Jiuhua concern. Ning also possessed the Niuwa painting and walked the path of the sword immortal. Indeed, the lesser thousand swords formation was extremely well suited for him. Most likely, the lesser thousand swords formation in his hands would be even more effective than it had been for the thousand swords immortal. Ning continued to view the treasures. Wings? Ning looked at the black wings atop the jade platter. They are much better than the wings I acquired after killing the disciples of Snow Dragon Mountain. The wings weren't that useful for Ning, 
as he primarily used them to cover up the fact that he used the Windwing Evasion. This was a divine ability which the ancestor of the Yuchi clan had only acquired after rescuing a celestial immortal, who in his gratitude had bestowed it upon the clan. It was abundantly clear from the fact that even the entire Black-White College only had five divine abilities that divine abilities were incomparably precious. No wonder the Yuchi clan insisted on using wing-type magic treasures to disguise themselves. The Flying Boat Ning stared at the fourth present, then laughed. A top-grade mortal-ranked magic treasure. In the future, I'll be able to travel much more quickly. Ning stretched his hands out, effortlessly binding both the wings and the boat-type magic treasures. The Miasma Gas Magic Treasure. Ning stared at the fifth treasure. He picked up that white jade bottle. After easily binding it, he discovered that within, there was a white pearl, surrounded by an extremely dense foggy white miasma gas. Step back. Go far away. Ning swept the surrounding area with his gaze, and the nearby cloud jade hurriedly retreated all the way out of the courtyard. Activate. Ning willed it. Instantly, a large amount of white miasma gas filled the courtyard. The white miasma gas covered an area of many tens of meters, and the density of it was such that even Ning's fiend god enhanced eyes were only just barely able to view his own fingers. In fact, it even influenced the surrounding elemental key flow, causing Ning to be unable to sense what was around him. According to what I hear, miasma gas magic treasures are extremely suited for fleeing, precisely because they prevent both vision with the naked eye as well as sensing one's surroundings. Ning nodded lightly. So it really is the case. Even I, the person who released the miasma gas, am unable to see the surrounding area. Once I release this miasma gas, for a short period of time, my foe will be unable to find me. I can choose a direction and immediately flee. Miasma gases were unable to distinguish from friend or foe. What Ning bound was the jade bottle and the pearl within it, that miasma gas simply existed within the pearl itself. I wonder if my divine sense can see through it. Ning willed it, and suddenly, whoosh. His divine sense spread out, instantly encompassing the entire courtyard. Eh. Ning revealed a hint of delight. Although the miasma gas was so powerful as to be able to disturb the flow of natural elemental energy, under Ning's divine sense, everything still appeared. Excellent. Ning was overjoyed. To others, miasma gas magic treasures are only for fleeing, but for me, I can release the miasma gas to befuddle my foes, then engage them and kill them in close quarters. This combat tactic instantly flashed through Ning's mind. Given that his own divine sense was not affected by the gas, in the future, it would be much easier for him to deal with Wanxiang adepts. Yet another killer move, Ning laughed. Ning then looked towards the sixth jade platter. 500 kilograms of liquefied elemental essence. This was an astonishing fortune, ordinary earth-ranked magic treasures were worth merely 5 kilograms, which was to say that this gift was the equivalent of a hundred earth-ranked magic treasures. Even if he wanted powerful earth-ranked magic treasures, he would still be able to trade for 8 or 10 of them. Even when Bai Wei and Fox had been betting frantically against each other, the stakes had only gone up to 40 or 50 kilograms of liquefied elemental essence. Northmont Black Tiger really is quite generous. Ning no longer hesitated, he collected the treasures, picked up the jade bottles, and headed for his private training room. Within the private room. The jade flask was placed in front of him, and the stopper had been pulled open. Ning sat in the lotus position atop the jade bed, calming himself down. He opened his mouth, and the liquefied elemental essence within the jade bottle instantly began to fly out and be absorbed by Ning's body. Rumble. The enormous Zifu lake within the illusory space of the Zifu Violet Palace. The water source suddenly began to surge with large amounts of pure elemental energy. The entire Zifu lake began to swirl about expand in an incomparably rapid pace. The outer regions of the Zifu lake were constantly expanding towards every direction. The lake was growing to take up a larger and larger amount of the illusory space, and began to surge towards the deepest recesses of it. Expanding. It was still expanding. 50 kilograms of liquefied elemental essence. A hundred. A hundred fifty, Ning didn't hesitate at all, 
constantly refining and absorbing it all. His base was solid, and his comprehension of the Tao was quite high. His divine soul was very strong, and his sword heart was lustrous, he absolutely could surge all the way to the early Wanxiang adept stage if he so chose. The Zifu Lake continued to expand. It now covered a truly shocking amount of space, and could even be said to have expanded from a lake to a sea. A Zifu Sea. 300 kilograms. 350 kilograms. Last time, I used 40 or so kilograms of liquefied elemental essence. This time, if I use another 360 kilograms, it'll be about enough, Ning mused to himself. According to the flowing water source, if one refined 400 kilograms of liquefied elemental essence as a Zifu disciple, then the foundation that one would establish would be the so-called foundation for a celestial immortal. The manifestation one would later have would also be the best of manifestations. Rumble, 355 kilograms. 360 kilograms. 365 kilograms. Why doesn't my Zifu lake feel as though it has reached its maximum capacity yet? Ning was feeling rather puzzled, and he slowed down the rate at which he was refining liquefied elemental essence as well. Some of the weaker key refining techniques made it so that the practitioner's Zifu lake would at best be able to withstand 50 kilograms of liquefied elemental essence. But Ning had already been able to withstand more than 400 kilograms. 370 kilograms, 390 kilograms, 400 kilograms. Ning opened his eyes, halting his training. Last time, I used 40 kilograms, and this time, I used 400. And yet, my Violet Palace is able to continue to accumulate more? Ning frowned. Although the water stream source hadn't described an upper limit in detail, and there were small differences in each person's capacity, generally speaking, 400 kilograms should be quite close to the limit. I'll halt for now. In two days, when I meet Master, I'll ask him. Ning halted his training. As Ning was training. In a quite, secluded courtyard within East Stillwater City. Rock was seated in the lotus position on his bed, quietly nourishing his own Zifu Violet Palace. His Violet Palace had been damaged, naturally, he had to carefully cultivate it and heal it. Rocky, Rocky, come out, quick. A frantic voice rang out. Uncle Ming? Rock came to an immediate halt, leaving the bed and walking out. Uncle Ming, what is it? Rock pushed the door opened, then saw the bald, middle-aged man, his entire face covered with urgency. Rock felt extremely grateful towards Uncle Ming, at least Uncle Ming had let him stay here this entire time. Did you cause trouble or offend someone? A guard of Stillwater Commandery has come in search of you. The bald-headed, middle-aged Uncle Ming was utterly frantic right now. Ah. Uh? Rock shook his head. I haven't. Uncle Ming hurriedly said, enough talk. Hurry, go see him. Although he had safely secured this quiet, secluded little residence for himself in Stillwater City, compared to the exalted Marquisate of Stillwater, he was like an ant in front of a divine dragon. No, he wasn't even an ant. He was nothing more than a speck of sand. Rock, his face covered with puzzlement and unease, quickly appeared before the gates of the estate. In front of the gates, there were two armored Zifu disciple guards, and next to them was a white-robed youth. The two guards were standing behind this white-robed youth. Upon seeing this, although he felt terror in his heart, Rock also felt a hint of bitterness. To be able to have guards of the Marquis of Stillwater stand behind me, how long will it be before I can be at this level? Rock felt sourness in his heart. I'm not even able to join a school right now. Not a single school wants me. How long will it be before I am able to continue walking down my immortal path? The tall, skinny, white-robed man, upon seeing Rock, immediately revealed a smile. Are you Brother Meng Rock? Brother, Meng Rock? Rock stared. The bald Uncle Ming, by his side, was astonished as well. He hurriedly said, yes, he's Meng Rock. The tall, skinny, white-robed man laughed. My name is Cloudship. I have come on the orders of my master, Ji Ning, to invite you, Brother Meng Rock, to the Black White College. Chapter 4, A Sturdy Base. Meng Rock was completely stunned. 
Ji Ning? Of course he knew Ji Ning. This was the man who had saved his life. In the carefree caverns, he had watched as Ji Ning and another youth were welcomed with great splendor. Might I ask who your master, Ji Ning, is? Rock was somewhat hesitant. Was this the same Ji Ning he knew? My master is a formal disciple of the Black White College. The tall, skinny, white-robed cloudship laughed. When he entered the Black White College, he consecutively defeated multiple senior fellow disciples, and even several Wanxiang adepts were defeated by him. Brother Meng Rock, my master has invited you to go, will you go? Go? Of course he'll go. The bald Uncle Ming, standing nearby, immediately urged Rock to go. At the same time, he sent Rock mentally, Rocky, your stroke of good fortune has arrived. That Ji Ming is a monstrous talent and has successfully entered the Black White College as a formal disciple. The formal disciples of the Black White College are permitted ten retainer positions, and by the look of things, this youth is one of them. If Ji Ming is inviting you to go, it's very possible that you've received one of those ten positions. Rock, hearing this mental transmission, was shocked. One of the ten formal retainerships for a formal disciple. The Black White College was an incomparably exalted place, it was the most powerful school of the entire Stillwater Commandery, and a place where peerless geniuses gathered. Even the retainers of the peerless geniuses, as long as they worked hard and rendered merits unto the school, would have the chance to learn some truly top-tier key refining techniques. This was far better than being a formal disciple of the Thousand Rivers School. It must be understood that those extremely large schools were divided into outer court disciples, inner court disciples, main disciples, and the most supreme, core disciples. There were multiple layers of status. In the black-white college, however, there were only formal disciples and retainers, two layers. Thus, even retainerships were positions that were deeply coveted. I'll have a chance to enter the black-white college? Roche's heart was filled with all sorts of ideas. Uh, Brother Meng Rock? Cloudship said with a touch of urgency. Uh? Rock frantically nodded. Go, go, of course I'll go. The Black White College. Cloudship and Rock had both transformed into streaks of light and were flying in the air. Look. That is Dark North Peak, the place where my master, Ji Ning, resides. Cloudship pointed towards a distant, elegant mountain peak. Ever since he passed through the formal gates of the Black White College, Roche's mind was filled with all sorts of wild thoughts. He, he had actually entered the Black White College. The nearby cloudship really was one of the ten retainers? Whoosh! The two charged down into the courtyard, quickly landing outside of its gates. The two young gate guards outside the gate all saluted respectfully. There is such a thick elemental aura here. After stepping into the courtyard, Rock could sense an incomparably dense elemental aura presence. The elemental aura in Stillwater City is already dense enough as it is, but this estate actually has a key gathering formation that is operating at all times. Rock was now growing rather nervous. Cloudship was leading him through a hallway, and they soon passed through a door, at which point they arrived at a wide, spacious estate. In the center of this estate, there was a fur-clad youth, who had a peerlessly bewitching beauty by his side, waiting on him. It was already very late at night. The figure of the fur-clad youth seemed quite blurry and unclear. Brother Ji Ning. Rock, upon seeing the fur-clad youth, couldn't help but blurt these words out. Rocky. Ning rose to his feet and walked over. Rock was rather reserved and nervous right now. This was no longer the same Ji Ning who had come to this city alongside him in search of a school. This was a formal disciple of the Black White College, the number one school of the entire Stillwater Commandery. And, from what Cloudship said, it seemed as though even in the Black White College, Ji Ning was quite the standout. Don't be nervous, Ning laughed, then asked, Meng Exian and Meng Jun. The two of them both entered schools. Rock said hurriedly, both of them are at the early Zifu stage, and so it was easy for them to join a school. They both entered the Thousand Rivers School. When saying this, Rock felt a bit of pain in his heart. He had originally wanted to join the same school as Meng Exian, but unfortunately, his foundation had been damaged and not a single school wanted him. 
the Thousand Rivers School? Ning nodded slowly. After becoming a formal disciple of the Black White College, I have ten retainer positions. I don't know if you'd be willing to become a retainer under my control? Roche's eyes instantly lit up, and his body began to tremble slightly. I'm willing. Rock said hurriedly. Ning laughed. You'll only be a retainer in name. The two of us will still treat each other as brothers. Oh, right. There's something you must understand, the Black White College has quite a few internal rules. Right. Rock nodded vigorously. What he was afraid of was that he would have no hope for the future. Since he had already joined the Black White College, a wide route for his immortal path had just appeared before him. Naturally, he would exert all possible effort to grow increasingly powerful. He walk would ever farther along the immortal path, and in his heart, he murmured to himself, Little Exion. Wait for me. I, Rock looked at Ning. His eyes were somewhat red. With a thud, he suddenly fell down to his knees, then kowtowed. Rocky. Ning hurriedly went to pull him up. Brother Ji Ning, you saved my life, and now you've given me my immortal path back. I, Meng Rock, have nothing to repay you with. So long as you give the order, even if I must climb a mountain of blades or enter a sea of flames, I will charge forward. Rock looked towards Ning. Ning laughed. Rise, rise. Right at this moment, the nearby Cloud Jade actually grumbled, given senior apprentice brother Ji Ning's talent and power, how can he possibly need your help? Cloud Jade. Ning gave the Cloud Jade a glance, then instructed, go make the arrangements for some food. Rocky and I are going to have a good chat. Compared to his other three retainers, Ning felt more well disposed towards Rock. Yes. Cloud Jade turned and immediately departed, but while doing so, she was secretly grumbling to herself. Yet another hunk of wood. That Meng Rock fellow, upon entering, had given her just a single glance. She was beginning to question her own seductiveness. The morning sun rose, spreading its dim light throughout the entire black-white college. Everything appeared so dreamlike and illusory. Ning was atop a flying boat. Transforming into a streak of light, he flew out of Dark North Peak. Soon afterwards, he arrived in the air above the mountain of his master, Immortal Dientsai. Master. Ning landed in the courtyard, then called out respectfully. Come in. Immortal Dientsai's voice transmitted to him from outside. Ning immediately entered, and the servants at the gate naturally did not bar his path. Within the hall. The black-robed, black-haired Immortal Dientsai was seated in the lotus position atop a bed of clouds. He looked at Ning, and he felt as though the more he saw him, the more satisfied he was with him. Being able to teach an extremely talented disciple made him feel quite successful as well. Immortal Jensai said in a calm voice, Ji Ning, how did your three days of meditation go? Your disciple has made considerable gains. Ning said respectfully. Mm, -hmm. Immortal Jensai nodded slowly, then narrowed his eyes. Previously, Headmaster Jade C has already informed you regarding the Great Tao of the Sword, yes? Ning nodded. Yes. The sword, Immortal Dientsai said slowly, is a killing tool. It is also the tool which we immortal cultivators will use in our ascent to the peak, in slaughtering all who would impede our path. The Tao of the Sword is a type of combat-focused Tao. Sword Immortals, in turn, are immortal cultivators that are extremely skilled in combat. Immortal Dientsai laughed as he looked at Ning. Do you know, what the Tao of the Sword is? Ning was speechless. And then, lost, he shook his head. He had just entered the earliest realm of comprehension regarding this grand Tao of the Sword, and knew almost nothing at all about it. What is the Tao of the Sword? He really didn't know how to respond to such a question. Some Daos are Daos involving the mysteries underpinning the way in which the world operates. For example, your Rainwater Tao. The Tao of Freezing Ice. The Tao of Mystic Ice. And more. All of them are Daos regarding the profundities of the natural world. Ning nodded. These were, indeed, all natural Daos. The techniques one came up with after comprehending these Daos would all be referred to as, arts. 
Arts are a way to apply the das. The sword arts are that which you generally use when wielding the sword. To reach a level in the sword arts which is so high as to be a Dao of its own, that is what the Dao of the sword is. Immortal Dientsai looked at Ning. Thus, the Dao of the sword is actually a technical Dao, a Dao of applying certain techniques and knacks. Ning now understood. Not just the Dao of the sword, the Dao of Taiji is the same. Taiji also involves the application of certain skills and techniques. Taiji, in turn, is also a grand Tao. When, for example, you began to gain insights into water and fire, you might be able to apply the insights you gained into fire and water through the Tao of Taiji, and the power will exponentially increase. Immortal Dientsai looked at Ji Ning. The Tao of the sword which you have chosen as your path, in turns, results in you applying and executing the insights you have gained into the Tao of the sword. Ning nodded his head in understanding. Taiji? Dao of the sword? The application of a Dao? Regardless of whether it is Taiji or the Dao of the sword, these are all extremely, unfathomably profound grand Daos. They are extremely hard to comprehend. Immortal Dientsai sighed. For example, the Dao of the sword requires one to comprehend and develop one sword heart. The Dao of Taiji also requires one to comprehend and develop one's Taiji heart. Both are extremely difficult tasks. But upon embarking on this grand Tao, one's future potential will be limitless. Ning nodded as he listened. Remember. Immortal Dientsai looked at Ning, then said solemnly, as a sword immortal, you must have a supremely sincere heart. Sincere to the sword, and sincere to your own heart. Do you understand? Ning nodded solemnly. You must always reflect on your actions, and hone your sword heart. Do not let any dust alight on your sword heart. You must know, a truly sincere heart is always lustrous. Immortal Dientsai looked at Ji Ning. You must firmly engrave these words of mine into your heart. Yes. Your disciple will memorize them carefully, and will never dare to forget them, Ning replied. Mm, Immortal Dientsai waved his hand, retrieving a leather scroll which he handed to Ning. Ning accepted it, slightly puzzled. During these three days, Immortal Dientsai said, I've been carefully considering your earlier performance during the Tao debates. In the end, I selected 36 sword arts manuals for you. Afterwards, when you go to the Tao repository vault, go trade for the 36 manuals recorded on this leather scroll. 36. Ning was stunned. I am to go trade for them? Although he had just embarked on the path of the Tao of the sword and had received 2000 black white pellets, 36 sword arts manuals. Don't worry. These are all earth ranked or heaven ranked sword arts. In addition, I'm only having you trade for the first scrolls. In total, they will only cost 600 black white pellets, immortal Dientsai said. Only now did Ning let out a sigh of relief. 600 black white pellets was indeed not too great a cost for him. Although they are only earth ranked and heaven ranked sword arts, and although you are only trading for their first scrolls, they will be enough for you to use at the Zifu Disciple level and at the Wanxiang Adept level, Immortal Dientsai said. These are all sword arts which, if placed within some lesser tribes, would be considered peerless sword arts that serve as the foundation for the entire tribe. Carefully read through these sword arts. The first reason I am having you peruse so many different sword arts is to raise your level of insights into the Tao of the Sword, Immortal Dientsai said with a a laugh. Second is, the more you see and the more you study, the greater your experiences and understanding will be. In the future, when you are adventuring and battling in the outside world, you'll be able to advance more quickly and benefit from this study. Understood, Ning acknowledged. Go, then, to the Tao Repository Vault. After today, one day each month, you may come visit me and ask me some of the questions which have mystified you in your day-to-day -day training, Immortal Dientsai said. Once I feel your foundation is solid enough, then I'll permit you to leave the black-white college and go temper yourself in wandering the outside world. If you stay forever under the protection of your elders, there is no way you'll be able to become a true immortal. Only when you live beneath the pounding of the rain and the howling of the wind, when you are tempered by life and death battles, will you be reborn into a mighty immortal who does not fear the three calamities and nine tribulations. Ning nodded. Understood. 
Chapter 5, Soul Shaker Art Master, your disciple has one more issue. Ji Ning was still thinking about how, even after using 400 kilograms of liquefied elemental essence, his Zifu lake hadn't reached its limit. Speak, immortal Jian Tsai said. Ning hurriedly said, your disciple has trained in the flowing water source. In total, I've used 405 kilograms of liquefied elemental essence. According to the flowing water source, 400 kilograms is enough to establish a foundation for a celestial immortal, and if one tries to refine even more, one will quickly reach a limit. However, my Zifu Violet Palace has not yet reached the limit. Why is this? Oh? Immortal Jiantsai laughed. Ha ha ha, most immortal practitioners are vexed by their Violet Palaces not being able to absorb enough elemental key and their foundation not being sufficiently stable. But you are complaining about your Violet Palace being able to absorb too much? That's not it, Ning said hurriedly. I just am puzzled, and I don't understand why I am unique. Immortal Jiantsai laughed. This is because your body is the body of a fiend god. It would be one thing if you had an ordinary fiend god body, but yours is one which has been created by the legendary, number one fiend god body refining technique, the Crimson Bright Diagram of the Nine Heavens. It is a truly perfect fiend god body, no weaker than that of a mighty fiend god who was born from the natural world. It only makes sense that the Zifu lake within your fiend god body is able to withstand a tremendous amount of elemental ki. Oh. Ning now understood. Actually, the better a ki refining technique is, the more stable one's foundation will be. Perhaps you'll spend a bit more time at the Zifu or the Wanxiang levels, but the further you go, the easier your life will be, Immortal Jiantsai said. Also, there are some other techniques that are also immortal ranked, but are even better than even the flowing water source, which allows one to use 500 kilograms of liquefied elemental essence at the Zifu disciple stage. The more powerful a technique, the more elemental key it is able to control. Immortal Jiantsai looked at Ning. You should be happy. Your disciple understands, Ning said. However, how much liquefied elemental essence does your disciple need to use before advancing to the Wanxiang level? Immortal Jiantsai pondered for a moment, then said, Disciples who train in the Crimson Bright Diagram of the Nine Heavens, who also train in the Flowing Water Source, are indeed quite rare, let me think about it. Um, 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 um. Yes, I imagine you will need around 800 to 1000 kilograms or so. Ning sucked in a cold breath upon hearing this. Immortal Jiantsai looked at Ning. The Crimson Bright Diagram of the Nine Heavens is the number one fiend god body refining technique in the world. You must practice it with diligence as well. All right. Ning nodded, then added, then I'll go to the Tao Repository Vault now. Immortal Jiantsai nodded. Go, he said, then closed his eyes. Ning depart. As he left the room, he boarded his flying boat and soared into the skies, heading to the Tao Repository Vault. The Tao Repository Vault. Ning headed straight for the second floor, that of the parts. Originally, I had 200 black-white pellets left over. From the Tao debates, I gained 600 black-white pellets. After embarking on the path of the Sword Immortal, the college bestowed me with 2,000 black-white pellets. I have a total of 2,800 black-white pellets. Ning carefully searched through the countless books placed on the book stacks. He was searching for the 36 sword arts manuals which his master had instructed him to find on that leather scroll. Quite cheap. This one is only 30 black-white pellets. Mmm, -hmm, this one is just 10. Ouch, this one is actually a hundred. Ning moved as fast as the wind, and his eyes scanned the books as fast as lightning. He moved past large stacks of sword arts manuals, quickly picking out all 36 books. The cheapest of these 36 books was just 10 black-white pellets, while the most expensive was a hundred. However, these were all seemingly random, disjointed manuals, there were strange sword arts, tyrannical sword arts, fast sword arts. Out of a sea of sword arts manuals, Master actually chose these 36 after considering things for me. From this, one can imagine how many sword arts manuals Master has read. Ning sighed to himself in amazement. Clearly, to become a truly mighty sword immortal, it was also important to read many sword arts manuals. 
Not bad. This sword art is even more suited to me than the duality azure flame sword. As Ning flipped through the books, his eyes instantly began to light up. After choosing the 36 books, Ning came to another table. Atop the table, there were five abridged books. They were, Heavenly Transformation, Divine Thunderbolt Eye, Myriad Hibernating Venoms, Three Heads, Six Arms, and, Eye of the Luminous Heart. Divine Abilities Ning pondered to himself. I only have 2,200 black-white pellets left. Should I choose a divine ability, or a skill for my divine sense? Divine sense techniques were even rarer than divine abilities, the black-white college only had three books. The Soul Shaker Art, the Soul Charmer Art, and the Soul's Layer Art. Divine abilities and divine sense techniques were equally attractive to Ning. He wanted both. If only I could choose whatever I wanted, Ning gritted his teeth. He gave one last, regretful glance to those five abridged books, then turned and left, moving directly towards the other table filled with divine sense techniques. Atop the table, there were a total of three golden books. Not hesitating at all, Ning picked up one of the golden books, then straightforwardly departed the Tao Repository Vault. Upon Ning leaving the vault, the tall, muscular, armored Tao Protector looked at him. You've made your choice. Yes. Take it. Ning handed it over, and when he did, he couldn't help but turn to look back at the Tao Repository Vault. His divine abilities. He really, really wanted to acquire a few divine abilities. For example, that, Eye of the Luminous Heart, also had a side effect pertaining to divine sense, and was extremely mysterious and profound. But the cost of the first scroll alone was 5,000 black-white pellets. For the, Divine Thunderbolt Eye, one could immediately open a third, Divine Eye which was able to draw in and store the lightning and thunder of the world. With but a thought, one could release thunderbolts from that Divine Eye. Its power was truly terrifying. For now, I can't have my cake and eat it as well, Ning sighed to himself. I already have a divine ability, the Star Seizing Hand, which is vastly superior to these divine abilities. These divine abilities, as far as I'm concerned, are just supporting arts that can make up for some of my weaknesses. They will not, however, noticeably increase my real power. This Soul Shaker art, however, will allow me to be able to gain yet another killer technique in a short period of time, Ning mused to himself. The Soul Shaker art, S power was not related to one's divine power or elemental key, it relied on the strength of one's divine will. The stronger the divine will, the more powerful the Soul Shaker art would be. His divine will was at the level of a primal Taoist's by now, and with the Nuwa painting, his divine soul would only continue to grow in strength. Naturally, he had to learn a divine sense technique. You didn't choose a divine ability? The Tao Protector, after looking at Ning's choices, was rather amazed. Apprentice nephew Ji Ning, this soul shaker art, only requires a divine will to be used, but only other Wanxiang adepts will have a divine will as well. At most, you'll be able to slightly impact other Wanxiang adepts. You train in the Crimson Bright Diagram of the Nine Heavens, it's best if you choose a divine ability. Ning laughed. This Tao Protector had no idea that his divine soul was already at the divine sense level. This is my choice, Ning said. Your decision. The Tao Protector had only chosen to say a few extra words for Ning's benefit. Since Ning insisted, he naturally wouldn't say anything else. The Soul Shaker art requires 2,000 black-white pellets, while the others need exactly 600. The Tao Protector looked at Ning. I'll destroy the restrictive spells around these sword arts manuals, and I'll also go acquire the actual copies of the Soul Shaker art and the heaven-ranked sword techniques for you. Soon, Ning paid the 2,600 black-white pellets, then departed with the 36 sword arts manuals as well as the Soul Shaker art, and returned to his Dark North Peak. Upon returning to Dark North Peak, Ning felt quite the itchy feeling in his heart. He gave a few instructions, ordering that he was not to be disturbed unless there was something important. And then, he went directly into his private training room. Back to the training room again. Cloud Jade stared at Ning, chewing on her lips. There was a hint of sadness in her eyes. He won't talk to me at all. 
The nearby rock cast Cloud Jade a glance, laughing inwardly. How could he not tell that Cloud Jade had been hoping to seduce Ning? What a pity. Senior apprentice brother Ji Ning's Dao heart is incomparably firm. How could a vixen like you possibly move him? Within the private room. Ning sat down in the lotus position, immediately beginning to flip through the Soul Shaker Art S Complete Manual. The complete manual to the Soul Shaker Art wasn't too thick. After beginning to carefully read through it, Ning started to understand, the so-called Soul Shaker Art was just an extremely unique way of applying the divine will. This was a technical manual, but its value was comparable to a divine ability. The Soul Shaker Art? Ning closed his eyes, beginning to ponder on what he had read. Rumble, Ning's powerful divine will began to spread out, filling the entire private room, and he began to test it over and over. Failure. 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 Ning's repeated failures didn't cause him to feel the slightest bit dispirited. Each time, he would realize what his mistake was, and each time, he would perform better than the last. In the blink of an eye, more than half a month passed with Ning staying within the training room. Because Ning had ordered his servants long ago that he was not to be disturbed unless there was something critically important, for this period of time, things were quite calm and quiet. Within Ning's sea of consciousness, there was a miniature Ji Ning, seated in the lotus position. This was Ning's divine soul. The divine soul sat there in the lotus position, a runic seal repeatedly appearing and disappearing over his chest. Whoosh! The azure seal managed to remain alive for a few instants, but then was extinguished once more. Ning calmly absorbed the lessons of this failure, then tried again. Whoosh! Instantly, a queer azure seal once more appeared in front of the chest of Ning's divine soul. This seal, at first glance, appeared to be some sort of script, but it was neither a fiend god character, nor a character from any language he was aware of. When seeing this azure rune, one felt as though a violent wave was slamming against the shore. Go! Ning willed his divine soul to release his tremendously powerful divine will, which came out through that azure runic seal. The divine will which was released wasn't as dispersed as it was before, rather, it was a wave that was folded together in layers. His divine sense spread out like waves in every direction, constantly rolling forth without end. One could imagine how, if Ning encountered a living creature with a soul, these turbid waves of divine will would instantly smash down against the enemy's soul, just like a wave smashing down upon a shore. At last, I've finally managed to just barely manifest the Soul Shaker rune. Dot. Ning opened his eyes, revealing a hint of a smile. However, I'm still quite far off from the true, perfect Soul Shaker rune as mentioned in the book. Relaxed, Ning left the private room. By the time he arrived in the outer courtyard, he saw that it was late at night. Outside was a sea of sparkling stars in the night sky. Ning raised his head, staring at the sea of stars, then laughed. In the upcoming period of time, what I'll need to do is spend quite some time meditating on the Tao and on sword arts here at the Black White College. Only when Master nods in approval shall I go out and temper myself through adventuring. Time flowed on like water. Ji Ning and Mu North Sun, the two new disciples of the Black White College, lived lives that were peaceful and yet meaningful. They focused on comprehending the Tao, on analyzing sword arts and the Tao of constructs, and unconsciously, their power grew greater and greater. The two of them had been like two pieces of unpolished jade, but the Black White College slowly carved and shaped them, letting them reveal their true luster. In the blink of an eye, more than three years passed. It was the height of summer now. This year, Ning turned 20 years old. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to an adventure fantasy novel. The Desolate Era. Book 8, Rain Dragon Guard. Chapter 6, Three Years Later. This midsummer dawn was uncommonly cool. Ji Ning, still clad in his black furs, walked out from the estate atop Dark North Peak. Senior apprentice brother Ji Ning. Meng Rock, who had grown only more muscular and tanned, immediately greeted him with respect. Rocky, prepare some food for me. Same as what we've done in the past. Ning laughed as he gave some instructions. In the past three years, Northmont Byway had delivered two more retainers, and so he now had a total of six under his control. 
He was now quite familiar with all six of them, but he still trusted Rock the most. Because Rock had damaged his key foundation in the past, upon entering the Black White College, he began to train as a fiend god as well, and his skin had darkened as a result. Yes, senior apprentice brother Ji Ning, Rock said, immediately departing. Senior apprentice brother Ji Ning, you came out. A beautiful figure walked over from afar. It was Cloud Jade. Behind her was a black-robed youth, this was one of the six retainers under Ning's command, Wei Fang. Cloud Jade's eyes were as bright as jewels. After having been in the black-white college for so long, her aura had improved as well, and she now had an additional hint of otherworldliness about her. You were in closed-door meditation for so long this time, senior apprentice brother. It was almost a month. She stared at Ning with a gaze that was quite scorching. Although her horizons had been expanded during her time at the Black-White College, in her eyes, Ji Ning was still the most brilliant star of them all. Three years had passed, and compared to three years ago, Ning's aura had only grown more simple and pure, he was like a youth who lived a rustic life in the mountain wilderness. But Cloud Jade understood that her senior apprentice brother Ji Ning was now far more powerful than he had been three years ago. There were now extremely few people who were willing to engage in a discourse on the Tao with Ning at the Tao Debate Palace, and quite a few secretly claimed that Ning must surely be a reincarnated immortal. From this, one could tell how monstrous Ning's performance had been. Each time I come out of seclusion, I'll see you, Ning laughed. Cloud Jade, you need to calm your heart and focus on training as well. Look at Wei Fang, he arrived after you did, but he's the most powerful of the six of you. Senior apprentice brother, you praise me overmuch, the black-robed youth, Wei Fang, immediately said with respect. Compared to you, senior apprentice brother, I am countless tens of thousands of kilometers beneath you. I've already worked quite hard, Cloud Jade said. But Ning only shook his head. Your talent is excellent, but your Tao heart is somewhat lacking. Cloud Jade just rolled her eyes. Ning secretly shook his head. When Cloud Jade had first joined the school, she had wanted to seduce him. After realizing that there was no hope, although she was still very respectful to Ning, she started to begin to work on seducing the other senior apprentice brothers of the college. She walks the path of immortal cultivation, but instead of calming her mind and focusing on training, the only thing on her mind is becoming Tao companions with powerful immortal practitioners. Jeez. Ning felt quite resigned about this as well. He understood everything quite clearly. Cloud Jade, by nature, wasn't a bad person. Of his six main retainers, the person Ning trusted the most was Rock, and the person he trusted the second most was Cloud Jade. As for the other four, although they were extremely respectful towards him, Ning could sense that all four of them were hugely ambitious, and so he had to be careful in the amount of trust he showed them. Ning sat there, sipping some stewed rice porridge that contained natural elemental energies within it while eating some delicacies. His mood was quite good to begin with, and it was improving further and further. Next to him was the white water hound who just lay there, looking at Ning. He sent mentally to Ning, Ning, son, you seem to be in quite a good mood. Right. I was in closed door training for nearly a month, but I've finally comprehended the second stance of the three foot sword. Ning looked at his Uncle White, his face covered in smiles. You've comprehended it? The Whitewater Hound instantly revealed a look of surprise and delight as well. Over the past three years, Ning had an immortal guiding him, the Sword Arts Manuals of the Tao Repository Vault to peruse over, and the complete, three-foot sword, in his mind, as well as the sword intent which Senior Northwalker had transmitted to him. Ning's rate of improvement had naturally been astonishingly fast. In the past, he had never had a truly formidable teacher. Even his father and the others, when faced with Ning's monstrous talent, felt that they were not quite good enough to teach him. With immortal Jiansai guiding Ning, Ning felt incomparable joy, and his rate of improvement had reached an astonishing level. However, he had never been able to completely comprehend the second stance of the three-foot sword. Three years. You finally mastered it. The Whitewater Hound rose to his feet, feeling excited for Ning. With this sword art mastered, I now have the confidence to go spar with Master once again, Ning said with a laugh. Perhaps this time, Master will acknowledge my growth and permit me to go out wandering. 
Without his master's permission, Ning was not to leave the school. Logically speaking, given his current level of power, Ning should have been able to go out wandering long ago. However, given how incredible Ning's talent was, immortal Jinsai's requirements for Ning were similarly incredible. By now, Ning had sparred against his master numerous times, and although he had improved greatly each time, he had never received his master's permission. Go, the Whitewater Hound mentally sent to him with a laugh. If you go, I'll be able to accompany you in wandering. In the past, I went out adventuring with your father as well. When I think about it, my blood starts to pump. By borrowing from Ning's liquefied elemental essence, the Whitewater Hound had naturally reached the peak Zifu stage long ago. Ning had wanted to trade for some powerful secret arts on behalf of the Whitewater Hound, but the Whitewater Hound didn't need it. All he accepted was some formation techniques to analyze, which Ning had spent 200 black-white pellets on. Because it took quite a long period of time to analyze formation techniques, the price of such techniques was actually quite low. Ning had spent 600 black-white pellets for his 36 sword arts manuals, but as for the formation manuals, he had spent merely 200 black-white pellets for 91 books. The Nine Scrolls on Formations, which that loose immortal had left behind was incomparably broad and profound. This was the complete legacy of a loose immortal. As a god beast, the Whitewater Hound had focused on analyzing formations, even when he had been accompanying Ning's father. Acquiring the Nine Scrolls was already a case of him being akin to a tiger who had gained wings. Now that he also gained so many formations manuals from the Black White College, he naturally had made enormous improvements. And, every so often, the Whitewater Hound would even go to the Black White College to listen to some primal Taoists or even to some of the immortals expound on the Tao. I'll go, then. Ning rose to his feet. Go. The Whitewater Hound watched as Ning left. Ning boarded his flying boat, then quickly disappeared into the distant horizons. Ning stood there atop his boat in midair, staring downwards. Soon, he arrived at the residence of his master, immortal Dientsai. Whoosh! Ning landed in front of the estate, and the gate guards smiled towards Ning. Ning strode directly inwards without waiting. Immortal Dientsai had given the order long ago that Ning was to be permitted to enter directly, without any need to report his arrival. Within the hall. The black-haired, black-robed immortal Dientsai was seated in the lotus position on his jade bed. It seemed as though the passage of three years had not affected Ning's master at all. Today is not the first of the month. Have you come here to spar with me once more? Immortal Dientsai looked at his beloved disciple. Over the course of the past three years, he had come to love his sole disciple even more, to the point where his affection for Ning was even greater than his affection for the descendants of his clan. Yes. Ning looked at his master. A sword light that seemed almost physical had appeared within Ning's eyes, and his entire person slowly began to radiate a terrifying sword intent. His sword intent surged through the heavens. It does seem that you've improved a bit. Immortal Jiansai nodded. Come, then. Attack me. Be careful, master. A dark north sword appeared out of nowhere, and he gripped it with two hands. Swish. Ning transformed into a blurry, rapidly moving figure, and the sharp sword in his hand seemed to have turned into a ghostly image. His speed had reached an extremely high level, and he instantly pierced the sword towards Immortal Jiansai, seated on the jade bed. Immortal Jiansai, seated on the jade bed, leisurely stretched out his fingers, forming a sword finger. With a light tap, a streak of sword light instantly arced out. Clash. This solitary streak of sword light repeatedly clashed in mid-air multiple times with Ning's sword shadow. Ning's sword moved about like a ghost, but although this solitary streak of sword light was in an arc, its position also fluctuated unpredictably. Humph, Ning's sword light changed, becoming domineering and tyrannical. Bang! Instantly, the surrounding area was submerged into a sea of fire, and Ning's sword became one of the flames within it, incomparably valiant as it chopped directly towards immortal Dientsai. This sword attack of Ji Ning's, had already vastly surpassed the, Thunder Flame Sword, S level, and most likely even the person who had originally developed the, Thunder Flame Sword, was no match for the current Ning in terms of the Tao of the Sword. Extinguish. 
Immortal Jinsai revealed a hint of a smile as well. With a gentle tap of the fingers, a sword light flew out from his fingertips which instantly transformed into thousands of silken lines. These silken lines crisscrossed each other, seeming to form a giant net. This giant net of sword light howled forward, quickly surrounding and wrapping around Ning's pyroclasm of sword light. Heartless water flame. Ning revealed a smile as well. Instantly, the surrounding area changed yet again. One side was filled with blazing flames, while the other side was filled with boundless rainwater. In one of Ning's hands was a blazing sword of fire, while in the other was a sword of rain. Ning's entire figure radiated an invincible aura as he charged directly towards that net of sword light, and the twin swords in his hands spun in a vortex together as he did so. Bang! The sword lights of fire and water clashed head-on with the net of sword light in a giant explosion, and both shattered apart. This latest, heartless water flame finally seems to have a bit of flavor to it. Immortal Jensai pointed with his sword finger once more. Swish! A sharp sword light attacked with incomparably astonishing speed towards Ning, while at the same time, Immortal Jinsai pointed again, and again, one streak of sword light after another shot out, all moving at incomprehensible speeds. Last time, he was defeated by this technique, and his body was filled with quite a few bloody holes. I wonder if he'll be able to block it this time. Immortal Jinsai's eyes were filled with anticipation. Ning no longer revealed an incomparably relaxed smile on his face as he had before. Instead, his eyes lit up, and he seemed to suddenly explode with power. Whoosh! 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 The twin swords in Ning's hands began to move. Suddenly, in the area around Ning, an enormous millstone of fire and water appeared. Fire and water were contradictory, opposite types of elemental energy, but they twisted past each other here to form this enormous millstone. In the very center of the millstone, where the water and fire clashed with each other, a terrifying wind force arose. This tricolored millstone revolved around Ning, and where Ning's sword light flashed past, an incomparably powerful wind arose as well. Fast. Faster than fast. Chop. 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 Ning consecutively chopped and extinguished the sword lights created by his master's finger taps. The bedstone of fire and water revolved around him, while the gale raged around his body. Ning's sword flashed out like lightning as well, each time striking at the weaknesses on the side of those flashes of sword light, rather than taking them head out. Faster. Move a little faster. Immortal Jensai began to tap with his fingers even faster, and the sword light which appeared in the air grew increasingly ferocious as they shot towards Ning. Ning, ensconced within that giant millstone of fire and water, wielded his sword at an inconceivably fast speed, and continued to chop apart and extinguish those flashes of sword light. Go, then. Immortal Jensai gently flicked his fingers, and the thousand rays of sword light that were in midair suddenly seemed to transform into brilliant stars. They resonated amongst each other, thundering forth with a unified attack that blasted towards Ning at the same time. Chapter 7, Master and Disciple, Pre-Departure Not good. Last time, when Ji Ning had sparred with his master, his master hadn't used this technique. Faced with the sudden attack of a thousand star-like bursts of sword light, Ning knew that his tripartite millstone wouldn't be able to withstand the assault. The sword intent radiating from Ning's body compressed itself to the utmost. Pierce. Ning's sword suddenly shout out. It was as though even if there were infinitely great impediments standing in front of Ning and wrapping around him, as though ropes were bound about him, causing his sword to frantically struggle to pierce forward. It moved incomparably slowly, and yet, in reality, that was just a misperception, as the sword itself had reached an incredibly great speed. Swish. The sword shot out like a meteor. It tore through the boundless darkness, ripped through all impediments, and completely shattered the thousand-plus bolts of starry sword light. With part of it having been destroyed, all the surrounding bolts of starry sword light vanished and dispersed. As for Ning himself, moving like a phantom, he charged towards his master, the sword in his right hand having stabbed forward and broken those thousand stars of sword light. At the same time, the sword in his left hand had already stabbed towards his master, Immortal Jensai. Break. Immortal Jensai revealed a smile as he rapped out this word. 
A formless sword energy instantly clashed with Ning's Dark North Sword. It was not only powerful, but backed with a seemingly endless momentum of energy, causing Ning to be pushed back many meters before finding his footing. Immortal Jiansai, still seated on his jade bed, nodded slowly. The Th Manifold Thistlethorns. You finally comprehended this technique. This was the attack Ning had just demonstrated, the second stance of the three-foot sword, Manifold Thistlethorns. This technique represented the highest level of comprehension regarding the Tao of the sword which Ning had ever reached. Thanks to your guidance, Master, Ning said respectfully, your foolish disciple was able to finally comprehend this technique today. Ha ha ha. You only spend three years to comprehend the second stance of the three-foot sword. If this performance of yours is to be described as foolish, then your master would have to be described with the word idiot, immortal Jiansai laughed. After I comprehended the first stance, it took me ten years before I comprehended the second one. Your talent is, indeed, far superior to mine. Ning said respectfully, my talent is at most comparable to those reincarnated immortals. Our black-white college has had reincarnated immortals in every generation, and even in the current black-white college, there are several reincarnated immortals. You, master, despite not being a reincarnated immortal, are able to suppress those who are in power, and are universally acknowledged as being the immortal with the greatest chances of becoming a celestial immortal. Similarly, the sloppy Daoist is also the undisputed number one figure amongst the third generation disciples. Immortal Jiansai nodded in satisfaction. It is good that you are always humble and vigilant. Now, you can leave the school and go out wandering. Immortal Jiansai smiled as he looked at Ning. Finally, he had said these words. I can go out adventuring now. Ning couldn't help but feel excitement in his heart. Each time he had made a breakthrough, he felt that he should be able to receive his master's acknowledgement, but in reality, he had been disappointed time and time again. For example, when he had reached the Tao domain level in the Tao of the Inferno, or when he had developed increasingly powerful sword arts, including his own perfected and highly suitable tripartite millstone sword attack, he had felt incomparably proud and vigorous. However, his master had not nodded in approval. Not until today. After he had mastered the second stance of the three-foot sword, he had finally gained his master's acknowledgement. Finally, he was going to be able to wander the outside world, filled with both dangers and opportunities. The vast, endless outside world. Ji Ning. Immortal Jiansai looked at Ning. Master. Ning tamped down the excitement in his heart. Accept these two protective items. Two items appeared out of nowhere in Immortal Jiansai's hands. One appeared to be a brooch which was covered with carvings that appeared to be of a beautiful immortal palace. As for the other, it was a fiery red jade bottle. This pendant is something I personally created. After refining it, carry it with you at all times. With but a thought, you can release the sword energy within it to protect yourself. With that sword energy protecting you, you will be able to resist the attack of even a loose immortal or an earth immortal for one breath's worth of time. As for this jade bottle, you must be extremely careful within it. Within it there is a single, polar aurora thunder flame pearl. Its power is tremendous. Once you throw it out, it does not distinguish between friend or foe. Everything within a radius of 30 meters will be reduced into powder. Even loose immortals or earth immortals will most likely be heavily wounded, while almost all primal Taoists will perish. Of these two items, one is meant for offense, while the other is meant for defense. However, each can only be used a single time. Thus, you must consider carefully when to use them. Immortal Jiansai looked at Ning, his eyes filled with anticipation and solemnity. As the saying went, when a child traveled a thousand kilometers away, the parents would be filled with worry. He only had a single disciple under his tutelage, and this disciple was about to go adventuring in distant lands, as his master, how could immortal Jiansai not be worried? After all, no matter how powerful a peerless genius was, if he didn't have the chance to grow in power, he still wouldn't be able to overcome some older, more powerful figures. For example, if Ning encountered a primal Daoist opponent, he would still be crushed without being able to fight back at all. You must remember to be cautious in all matters. Think thrice before acting, but once you decide, act decisively. 
Immortal Jian Tsai looked at Ning. Suddenly, Ning felt an aching feeling in his heart. That look. In the past, when he had left West Prefecture City to go adventuring, his father and his mother had looked at him with those exact same eyes. Eyes filled with worry, but also anticipation. Although his master was powerful, he couldn't take on all the risks of life for his disciple. Every disciple needed to truly test themselves, only then would they be successful. Don't worry, master. Your disciple will definitely be careful, Ning said hurriedly. The only things which master can give you are these two items. Immortal Jian Tsai looked towards Ning. Remember. Everything else will be up to your own efforts. All right. Ning accepted the items respectfully. These two items were both truly priceless items, in fact, they vastly outstripped the value of the presents which Northmont Black Tiger had given. The defensive pendant was able to defend against the attack of an earth immortal or loose immortal for a full breath's worth of time. In a life and death attack, death would sometimes come in an instant. To immortal practitioners, the amount of time one needed to take a breath was enough for them to fly countless kilometers away. As for the Polaris Aurora Thunder Flame Pearl, it could badly injure immortals and kill almost all primal Taoists. It could be described as a true killer item. When next you return to the college, come seek me out. You can go now. Immortal Jiansai waved his hand as he spoke, then closed his eyes. All right. Ning bowed, then immediately departed. After leaving his master, Ning boarded his flying boat and flew into the skies. He felt an aching feeling in his heart. He could sense that his master's heart was filled with concern for him, and that concern was not unreasonable, the path of an immortal practitioner was a path which was against the heavens, a path that was filled with pitfalls. Even the heavens themselves would, intentionally or unintentionally, create numerous traps and barriers for immortal practitioners. Far too many disciples of the Black-White College had died in the outside world. It must be understood, so long as the disciples of the Black-White College did not perish, the vast majority would become primal Taoists. But there were hundreds of third-generation disciples, while only thirty or so second-generation primal Taoists. Why? The reason was, the rest died. They died while testing themselves, while roaming the outside world. As the saying goes, if jade isn't polished, it cannot be carved, but during the carving process, how many pieces of unpolished jade would end up being destroyed? The jade carving knife of the tempering process was truly a vicious one. To embark on the path of immortals, this was embarking on a path that was filled with countless pitfalls and snares. Master. I will definitely return to you alive, Ning murmured in his heart. And then, his flying boat went directly to the residence of his junior apprentice brother, the mountain peak of Mu North Sun. Twinwood Peak. Ning flew into the air above it, then called out directly, Junior Apprentice Brother North Sun. His voice echoed out in waves, reaching the estate below. Soon, a figure appeared in the courtyard below, who quickly called back, Senior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning, quick, come in. Ning descended to the ground. Compared to three years ago, although North Sun still had the appearance of an immature youth, in terms of both power and Tao heart, he had grown considerably. After all, he had been able to join the Black-White College at the age of 14, and had been able to spend so much time in meditation in front of the Black-White diagram, his talent was, without question, extremely high. The reason why he had lost at the Tao debates was because he was simply too young, and because he hadn't had as great a stroke of karmic luck as Ning had, who had acquired the underwater estate. Senior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning, why did you decide to come here to my place? North Sun laughed. Normally, it's quite rare to see you come out. I was just approved by Master to go out adventuring in the outside world. Ning revealed a smile. Really? Wonderful. North Sun instantly began to celebrate. I've waited for this day for over a year now. Two years after I joined, my master gave me permission to go out adventuring. You are so strong, senior apprentice brother Ji Ning, but you spent three years in training. Immortal Jiansai really is extremely exacting towards you. Ning laughed. After receiving the nod from his master, Daoist Jade Fine, North Sun had immediately come to find Ning. But Ning hadn't been able to leave, 
and so North Sun had tamped down his impatience. He didn't want to go out wandering all by his lonely self, he wanted a companion. If two brothers went out adventuring together, at least they wouldn't be too lonely. And so, he had waited, all the way until today. Oh, oh, I need to go to my master and bid her farewell, North Sun said hurriedly. Go, go, Ning said. Your master dotes on you so much, you really should have a good chat with her before leaving. The master of North Sun, Daoist Jade Fine, did indeed dote on him. First of all, the entire black-white college had very, very few people who focused on the Tao of constructs, it was rare for her to find such a wonderful disciple. And secondly, Daoist Jade Fine had been stuck at the primal Daoist level for many years. The assaults of the Three Calamities and Nine Tribulations had grown increasingly difficult for her to withstand, and she was close to her limit. A person close to the end of her years, upon suddenly taking on such a talented disciple who was so young, Daoist Jade Fine naturally doted fiercely on this disciple of hers. After he had entered her tutelage, Daoist Jade Fine had given North Sun 500 kilograms of liquefied elemental essence. Thus, North Sun had, at one go, trained all the way to the middle Wanxiang stage. Even in the Black-White College, this was incredibly rare. The unspoken rule of the Black-White College was that masters would not give their disciples too many treasures, instead, they would provide guidance to them. The college would place those special key refining techniques and divine abilities in the vault, and as the disciples rose in power, for example reaching the Dao domain level, they would then be able to go acquire those techniques. Even though a mountain of gold or a silver was right there in front of them, the disciples were to go dig for them themselves. Only then would they acquire them. Divine abilities, secret arts, they were all there. However, had to train in earnest and make improvements before acquiring them. If one didn't have to work hard and didn't make any improvements, and yet still received everything one wanted? This would result in a useless, hedonistic son of rich parents. Thus, the unspoken rule. A master could help, could guide, could lead by the hand. But the disciple had to go out and struggle for himself. It was extremely rare for someone like Daoist Jade Fine to give 500 kilograms of liquefied elemental essence to a disciple. However, that was also the limit of Daoist Jade Fine's doting on North Sun, in other aspects, such as in handing out black-white pellets, she didn't wantonly give him things. Right. North Sun nodded. Senior apprentice brother, go back to your own place for now. I'll go visit master, then make some preparations, tomorrow, I'll come seek you out, senior apprentice brother. We'll head out tomorrow morning and leave the black-white college. All right. Ning nodded. North Sun immediately produced the Azure Dragon construct out of nowhere. Boarding it, he rapidly soared into the skies and disappeared. Junior apprentice brother North Sun has gone to visit his master. Ning boarded his own flying boat, soaring into the skies. As he did so, he turned to glance towards immortal Jinsai's residence. Master. Your disciple definitely will not let you down. Chapter 8, Entering the Rain Dragon Guard. The next morning, at dawn. Dark North Peak. Senior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning, I want to go alongside with you. I can pour tea for you and service you. Cloud Jade looked expectantly at Ning. We are going out in the world to adventure and to test ourselves. There will be countless dangers. This isn't tourism. You had best just stay here calmly at the Black White College. Ning looked towards his retainers, Meng Rock, Cloud Jade, Cloud Ship, Forgard, Wei Fang, and Nether Sun. After I leave the Black White College, all matters here at Dark North Peak, great and small, will be managed by Meng Rock. Cloud Ship and the others, upon hearing this, were all rather amazed. Rock? The weakest amongst them was most likely Rock. The others had all improved in strength, but because Roche's key foundation had been damaged, he had been forced to divide his attention and also train as a fiend god. For now, at least, he was the weakest of them. Yes, senior apprentice brother Ji Ning. Cloud Jade and the others all acknowledged the order. Rocky. I entrust Dark North Peak to you. Ning looked towards Rock. The tall, swarthy Rock nodded solemnly. Senior apprentice brother Ji Ning, don't worry at all. Ning suddenly raised his head. 
From afar, a streak of light was flying over. It was Mu North Sun, riding on his Azure Dragon construct. North Sun called out towards him from afar, senior apprentice brother Ji Ning. Let's go, Uncle White. The flying boat appeared next to Ning, and the whitewater hound ambled into the boat. The two of them, a man and a large, snowy white hound, immediately soared into the air, moving to join with the distant North Sun, aboard his flying dragon. Soon, they all disappeared into the distant mountain peaks. Ning, North Sun, and the Whitewater Hound walked out from the main gates of the Black White College. The next time we return, North Sun said, we will be even more powerful. North Sun turned to look at the gates of the school, his eyes filled with anticipation and desire. He said softly, and I'm going to bring back a pile of techniques and arts which the college doesn't have, I've grown sick of not having enough Black White pellets, and of the pain of not having enough of them to trade for all sorts of golem-related arts. The black-white college had a sea of techniques and arts, where did they all come from? Naturally, they had been accumulated over the years by its disciples, who had brought them back after adventuring in the outside world. When the disciples offered new techniques and arts, they would receive corresponding rewards in black-white pellets and liquefied elemental essence. Ning actually had two extremely powerful techniques which he could offer to the college, the first was his divine ability, the Windwing Evasion, while the second was the Lesser Thousand Swords Formation. The entire school only had five divine abilities, from this, one could see how rare they were. This divine ability, however, had been passed down from generation to generation by the Yuchi clan, and even his mother had told him that it was not to be given to outsiders. How could he so casually give it up? As for the Lesser Thousand Swords Formation, that was something he could make his own decision on, but he had already left the Lesser Thousand Swords formation to the G Clan, in the future, the G Clan would rely on it to rise to prominence. His father had given his entire life for the G Clan, and Ning had grown up within the clan ever since he was young. He felt a powerful sense of loyalty to the clan. For now, Ning still needed to seriously consider as to whether or not he was to give such a powerful, consummate technique to the college. After all, all schools, sects, tribes, and clans viewed arts and techniques with great importance. It was entirely possible that an entire tribe might be exterminated for the sake of a divine ability or a powerful secret art. Let's go, Ning said. Where should we go? North Sun asked. First, to the Heavenly Treasures Mountain. Ning laughed. The Heavenly Treasures Mountain has countless treasures within it. If we are going to go adventuring, we'll need to prepare ourselves. We can go shopping there. Right. I really do want to go shopping. North Sun nodded. And so, Ning, North Sun, and the Whitewater Hound immediately departed the Black White College. A white-haired, young-faced old granny was standing within a courtyard. The water scrying mirror in front of her revealed Ning, North Sun, and the Whitewater Hound departing from the gates of the Black White College. North Sun, Daoist Jadefine's eyes held a hint of both worry and anticipation. The black-robed, black-haired immortal Dientsai was seated in the lotus position on his bed. Suddenly, he opened his eyes. They were filled with anticipation. His disciple had gone out to temper himself. Some disciples would return in two or three years. Some would only return after decades. Still others would return only after centuries. But of course, there were also some who would never return, having died in the outside world. Heavenly Treasures Mountain. This place had the support of the mighty imperial clan of the Xia dynasty. They were in every single one of the commandery cities which were stretched across the vast land. In the three years since joining the Black White College, Ning had come out and met with Northmont by way quite a few times. Naturally, he had gone to the Heavenly Treasures Mountain as well. Uncle White, this time when we go adventuring, we shall be beset by dangers. What do you need? Ning looked towards the Whitewater Hound by his side and spoke to him mentally. You've already given me that lesser teleportation Dao Seal, the Whitewater Hound sent back mentally. Right now, there is one thing which I wish for the most, the Fushi Staff Formation. Fushi Staff Formation? Ning nodded. Although he couldn't compare with his Uncle White in terms of formations, in his spare time, Ning would also go meditate on them. Naturally, 
he knew about the renowned Fushi Staff Formation. Fushi, that was a major power from the legends. Even in his previous life on Earth, Ning had heard some of the legends of Fushi. Fushi, Hoi, Kwafu, these were all figures out of ancient legends. The Fushi Staff Formation, in turn, was supposedly created by Fushi, formed from eight arrays of eight staffs, for sixty-four staffs in total. Fushi was able to use it to execute all sorts of formations. Those sixty-four staffs, there were boundless ways in which they could be used. In the hands of an ordinary immortal cultivator, they might be useless, but in the hands of a formation's expert, they could unleash astonishing levels of power. The higher one's level of insights into formations was, the greater and the more miraculous the power one would be able to unleash from the Fushi Staff Formation. According to legends, Fushi was able to rely on this Fushi Staff Formation to set up a grand formation that had the power to annihilate the heavens and exterminate the earth. In addition, the Fushi Staff Formation was something which could be carried about, like the 8 Trigrams Blood Dragon Formation, it could be unleashed at any time. Thus, those who were skilled in formations would generally try to procure a set of the Fushi Staff Formation. All right. Leave it to me. Ning nodded. Young Master Ji. Young Master Mu. A devilishly attractive female Zifu disciple had come to the gates of the Heavenly Treasures Mountain early on, and she now came to welcome them. Ning, North Sun, and the Whitewater Hound thus entered the Heavenly Treasures Mountain. There were countless treasures within the Heavenly Treasures Mountain, but the prices were similarly extravagant. Still, those who the Heavenly Treasures Mountain cared about would generally be given discounts. For genius disciples of the Black White College, a 30% discount would be given. This was essentially as large a discount as was possible, because when the Heavenly Treasures Mountain purchased treasures, they would usually buy them at a 60% valuation. But of course, there were stories of some immortals who both bought and sold items at a cost of 60%, the Heavenly Treasures Mountain wouldn't try to make any money off them at all. But of course, for now, Ning's group couldn't possibly be treated in this way. I'm selling this set of sword formations. This magic treasure as well. Oh, this set of sword formations as well. Within the Heavenly Treasures Mountain, Ning quickly began to sell off the many magic treasures he had accumulated, such as the various magic treasures he had acquired when killing the immortal cultivators of Snow Dragon Mountain. He had even sold off the sword formations bestowed upon him by Northmont Black Tiger and senior apprentice brother Blood Shadow. This was because, although these sword formations were of high quality, they came from different sources, some were ice attribute flying swords, while others were fire attribute flying swords. Having too many swords of different types was not beneficial to the lesser thousand swords formation. Soon, an hour had passed. Ning, North Sun, and the Whitewater Hound all departed from the Heavenly Treasures Mountain. Ning acquired a set of 360 high-grade mortal-ranked water attribute flying swords, then acquired another set of 360 high-grade mortal-ranked fire attribute flying swords. In total, he had 720 high-grade flying swords now. Although these were all produced by the Heavenly Treasures Mountain, and were flying swords of the most common variety, with nothing unique about them, they were still high-grade mortal-ranked weapons. If he had to use liquefied elemental essence to purchase them, he would have spent nearly 500 kilograms. Black Tiger had gifted him two sword formations, while Blood Shadow had gifted him with one. He had managed to sell them off for nearly 450 kilograms of liquefied elemental essence. The magic treasures of Adept Suli, in turn, were sold off for nearly 50 kilograms. In short, in the end, Ning ended up paying an additional 100 kilograms in exchange for 720 high-grade mortal-ranked flying swords and a Fushi staff formation. He then spent a bit more to purchase some necessary adventuring items. Ugh. After exiting the Heavenly Treasures Mountain, North Sun let out a sigh. After entering the Heavenly Treasures Mountain, I realized how poor I actually am. All I have left right now is around 5 kilograms of liquefied elemental essence or so. As for you, senior apprentice brother, I imagine you should be a bit better off. In the past three years, although I've won a few battles at the Dao Debate Palace, Ning shook his head. After this visit to the Heavenly Treasures Mountain, I'm essentially bankrupt as well. I only have around 50 or so kilograms left. North Sun nodded, but then his eyes lit up. 
Of course we won't be able to acquire any treasures while staying within the college all the time. We are now going to go out adventuring, and we'll have plenty of opportunities to acquire them. For example, back in the day, senior apprentice brother Bloodshadow managed to effortlessly gift you that precious mortal rank sword formation to you, senior apprentice brother Ji Ning. Clearly, to him, it wasn't worth anything at all. Now that we are going out adventuring, I trust that soon, we'll be just like him. Right. Ning's eyes were filled with eagerness as well. In the college, they would often hear about how this senior apprentice brother found a senior's legacy and acquired some precious item, or about how that senior apprentice sister had killed hundreds of other immortal practitioners over ten plus years of wandering and battling, and had acquired countless treasures. Or. Well. In short, Ning and North Sun had never been out adventuring, and so they naturally felt itchiness in their hearts. Just now, I traded for some treasures. My power has improved a bit, compared to the past. This time, I'm definitely going to go on a rampage around the world. North Sun was filled with a boundless heroic aura. Ha ha ha. Ning just laughed. His, Lesser Thousand Swords formation, still had, as its core, the Nine Yang Swords formation which he had acquired in the underwater estate. The other 360 water attribute flying swords and 360 fire attribute flying swords, they both countered and reinforced each other, and extremely well suited for controlling within the Tao of formations. Ning trusted that his, Lesser Thousand Swords formation, would also have incomparably astonishing combat power. My long distance attacks are now comparable to my close quarters attacks, Ning mused to himself. Ning was now extremely powerful in close combat, because he had reached the ninth stage of the Crimson Bright Diagram of the Nine Heavens, which was comparable to an ordinary early stage Wanxiang Adept Fiend God. In addition, after he had reached the Tao Domain level in the Tao of the Inferno and gained a thousand black-white pellets, Ning had purchased both the Divine Ability, Heavenly Transformation, as well as the second scroll of the Crimson Bright Diagram of the Nine Heavens. Thus, even if he didn't use the utterly monstrous, star-seizing hand, ability, just by relying on his, windwing evasion, and, heavenly transformation, divine abilities, Ning could unleash a truly astonishing amount of power in close combat. In addition, as a key refiner, he had the, lesser thousand swords formation, and so he was also extremely strong. Both in close quarters and at long range, he was extremely powerful. Senior apprentice brother Ji Ning, where should we go? North Sun looked at the nearby Ning. Where should we go adventure? Previously, our senior fellow disciples all recommended that we go join the Rain Dragon Guard, Ning said. There are many benefits for someone to join the Rain Dragon Guard, and we can also take on missions from them, and so have fixed goals when we go out adventuring. In addition, as Rain Dragon Guards who are out on official missions, we can also overawe and frighten off some people, and also avoid some difficulties. Right. North Sun nodded. I was thinking the same thing. The two finished their discussion, and their decision was, to first join the Rain Dragon Guard. Chapter 9, Rain Dragon Guard, Stillwater Division. Ji Ning, before leaving, paid a visit to Northmont Black Tiger's estate as well. He bade farewell to his good friend, Northmont Bai Wei, who upon learning that Ning was leaving, gave him quite a few pieces of advice. He knew exactly how dangerous adventuring in the outside world was, but in order to become a truly influential, powerful figure in the greater world, one did have to undergo a brutal, merciless tempering process. Within a desolate, wild region outside Stillwater City. Kaka Kaka, Crunch. An azure dragon construct, hovering in midair, suddenly transformed, its body beginning to change into the shape of a wide, dragon-headed ship. Ning raised his head, staring at the dragon-headed ship, then gave a surprised sigh and glanced towards the nearby Mu North Sun. Junior apprentice brother North Sun, this construct of yours can even transform? How formidable. You are an outsider who knows nothing at all about the art of constructs. Transformations are nothing more than parlor tricks, North Sun said smugly. Let's go. The Stillwater Division of the Rain Dragon Guard is located at the Crimson Dragon Mountains. Although it's a bit far from here, flying on magic treasures isn't quite as comfortable as letting the construct fly for us on its own. Laughing, Ning led the Whitewater Hound in boarding the dragon-headed ship. Standing atop the front of the ship, 
North Sun had an incomparably bold appearance, and the ship quickly soared into the clouds, moving at high speed. North Sun said, I have an essence gathering runic formation placed atop this construct, and so when flying at this speed, it won't use up any elemental energy at all. The elemental essence it absorbs while flying will be enough. I often heard Ant Master Jade Fine praise you and say that your talents in the Tao of Constructs are extremely high. In the college, we would at most engage in Tao debates, and so I've never had the chance to personally witness your power in this regard, Junior Apprentice Brother North Sun. Now that we are joining the Rain Dragon Guard, I'll be able to take a good look, Ning laughed. Make sure you watch with wide eyes. North Sun raised his head proudly, seeming quite delighted with himself. Ning roared with laughter. Although they had gotten to know quite a few senior fellow apprentices during the past three years at the Black White College, and they were on very good terms with some, such as Nine Lotus and Blood Shadow, in Ning's heart, the one he was closest to was still Mu North Sun, who had joined the school alongside him. North Sun, perhaps because of his young age, had completely focused on the Tao of Constructs since he was a child, and unlike Ning, didn't have memories from a former life. Thus, his behavior was quite juvenile and immature. In short, North Sun had the temperament of a child. If he liked something, he liked it, if he was mad, he was mad. He wasn't able to hide anything. When he first entered the school, he had been defeated twice in Tao debates, and had been unspeakably angry. If he had been slightly better at hiding his emotions, he wouldn't have exposed his anger so openly. Strictly speaking, he was a bit too earnest and sincere. In turn, however, Ning found it quite easy to get along with a little junior apprentice brother like him. There we are. We reached the Crimson Dragon Mountains. Northson's eyes were gleaming as he pointed into the distance. Ning stared into the distance. Past the clouds, he could see a chain of mountains that did indeed seem to be shaped into the sinuous figure of a dragon. The entire dragon-shaped mountain range was covered with a fiery red color, and from the distance, it did indeed look like a fiery, divine dragon. Its aura was quite astonishing as well, and in fact, it was even more terrifying than the grand formation of the Black-White College, which had been reinforced by countless generations of immortals of the college. It lives up to its reputation as one of the top two supreme powers within Stillwatery Commandery, Ning said with an amazed sigh. North Sun sighed in amazement as well. The two supreme powers are the Northmont clan of Stillwater, and the Stillwater division of the Rain Dragon Guard. In addition, just from looking at the Grand Formation, we can see that they definitely far surpass our Black-White College. The Rain Dragon Guard really live up to their reputation. This was just a mere commandery division. When you think about how there is such a division in every single commandery which has been united under the control of the Xia dynasty, one can't help but shudder. Ning nodded. This is true. The Northmont clan of Stillwater Commandery held, as their enfeoffment, the entire Stillwater Commandery. They had existed from the Fiend God era, naturally, they had accumulated countless valiant powers. As for the Rain Dragon Guard? One could see from a superficial look as to how powerful they are. In addition, they could ask for the support of the other divisions at any time, and could even request support from the headquarters of the Rain Dragon Guard in the imperial capital of the Xia dynasty. To the Rain Dragon Guard which oversaw the entire Xia dynasty, sending out a few hundred or even a thousand immortals was a minor matter. It's precisely because they are so powerful, being representatives of the Xia dynasty, that even we desire to join the Rain Dragon Guard, Ning said. Come. Let's move over. Right. North Sun nodded. The dragon-headed boat immediately swooped lower, moving directly towards the Crimson Dragon Mountains. The Crimson Dragon Mountains were shaped like an enormous dragon, with the head of the dragon being the mountain where guests were welcomed. Ning and North Sun directed the construct vessel to swoop downwards, landing directly atop a flat area at the guest-welcoming mountain. After collecting the Azure Dragon construct, Ning, the Whitewater Hound, and North Sun all moved over. Right at this moment, Two Zifu disciples who wore fiery red armor walked over from afar. A cold look on their faces, they barked, Why have you come to our Crimson Dragon Mountains? Ning and North Sun both felt as though they were being rather overbearing, but this was the local division of the Rain Dragon Guard, after all. The two of them couldn't act too inappropriately. We have come to join the Rain Dragon Guard, 
Ning said. Oh? The two fiery armored Zifu disciples gave them a glance, and the leader, a tall, skinny cultivator, said in a cold voice, then follow me. Ning, North Sun, and the Whitewater Hound immediately followed after him. They all moved through the mountainous as easily as though they were moving through flat land, and these crimson armored Zifu disciples could be seen throughout this guest welcoming peak. The two of you, listen up. The tall, skinny cultivator leading to them said in a cold voice, quite a few wish to join our rain dragon guard. However, you have not yet joined and are not yet rain dragon guards. And so, you'd best obediently obey the rules here. North Sun, upon hearing this, frowned. Ning, however, was more or less calm. Remember this. First of all, you are not rain dragon guards, thus, within the Crimson Dragon Mountains, you are forbidden from fighting. If you violate this, you will be killed with no mercy. Second, the only place within the Crimson Dragon Mountains which you may move about in is this place, the Guest Welcoming Mountain. If you barge into other areas, you will be killed with no mercy. Third, you are not to touch or damage the restrictive formations set upon the guest welcoming Muantan. Violators will be killed with no mercy. The tall, skinny man didn't even look at Ning or North Sun. North Sun's face was now turning rather ugly. He sent mentally, Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning, the Rain Dragon Guard have too many rules, and they are too brash and arrogant. We are disciples of the Black White College, and yet they treat us like this? Forget about being disciples of the Black White College, even if we were members of the Northmont clan of Stillwater, it wouldn't mean anything in this place. Ning had read the intelligence reports, and knew a few things about the Rain Dragon Guard. Ning, North Sun, and the Whitewater Hound continued to follow from behind. Soon, they arrived at the back of the mountain, where there were wooden houses and stone houses scattered everywhere. Take a look. The tall, skinny cultivator pointed towards the distant stone and wood houses. Within those houses are those who wish to join the Rain Dragon Guard. These houses were built and left behind by others who came to join us. You can choose an empty one and live there for now. When we've cobbled together enough people, you'll be sent to the wild marshes of the Jail Mountains. After speaking, the tall, skinny cultivator turned and departed, quickly disappearing. Who the hell is he? He's so arrogant, North Sun muttered. He's an auxiliary keeper of the Rain Dragon Guard, Ning said. He had met with Bai Wei quite a few times, and had learned many things. A keeper of the Rain Dragon Guard? North Sun said, surprised, the Rain Dragon Guard actually has keepers? Ning nodded. Of course. Those of us who join the Rain Dragon Guard are all quite free and unrestrained, we roam about the world, and only when we come to take on missions will we appear. However, the Rain Dragon Guard also need some people who are permanently stationed here, or some soldiers who they will be able to trust completely. Thus, the Keepers were created. The Keepers of the Rain Dragon Guard are like soldiers, they are controlled extremely strictly, and are subject to many rules. They aren't as free as us, Ning said. You should know that the Rain Dragon Guard has an auxiliary corps. Generally speaking, the keepers are selected from the auxiliary corps. Oh. North Sun now understood. Although their freedoms are restricted, they have the highest degree of trust from the Xia dynasty. Within the Rain Dragon Guard, they have access to more divine abilities, secret arts, treasures, etc. As for us, even after we become Rain Dragon Guards, we'll still need to carry out missions in order to receive such benefits, Ning said. To get something, you have to give something. North Sun hurriedly nodded. I don't want to become a keeper. There are so many rules, how does it even feel like being an immortal practitioner? That's just a form of suffering. Everyone has their own choices, Ning said with a laugh, then sighed. Those who are extremely talented will naturally have the option of choosing to be free and unrestrained. But for those who are less talented, they naturally might give up these things, so as to be able to acquire some top-class techniques, secret arts, and whatnot. Mm. That's true as well. North Sun nodded, seeming to have understood something. As the two chatted, they continued to move forward. The stone and wooden residences were all very simply made, generally speaking, they had just a single house and a yard. 
A number of them already had immortal cultivators residing in them. This one. North Sun pointed at a grassy area in front of him. As he pointed, instantly, a streak of light flew out, and the streak of light quickly began to transform and expand atop the ground, quickly developing into quite an elegant-looking estate. An estate made from a construct? Ning was startled. The Tao of constructs truly was a remarkable one. Carriages, warships, people, beasts, estates, or even cities, all these things could be produced through the Tao of constructs. Who knows how long this adventure of ours shall last. It's quite unsafe to stay in an empty, desolate area. Thus, I personally created this Moonwood Estate, which even a Wanxiang adept would need to spend quite a bit of time to break into, North Sun said smugly. Not bad, not bad, Ning laughed as he walked inside. And so, Ning, North Sun, and the Whitewater Hound took up residence within the Moonwood Estate. One day after another passed, and the immortal cultivators living in the nearby stone and wood houses began to discover that a construct estate had appeared in their midst. However, none of them commented on it, just waited quietly together. Early one dawn, a month after Ning's group had arrived. Everyone. A sonorous voice thundered out, instantly filling every single stone room and even wooden room. Even the construct estate which North Sun had created was unable to block out this sound, which blasted forth next to Ning, North Sun, and the Whitewater Hound's ears. It is time to go to the wild marshes of the Jail Mountains. The voice continued to echo forth. Ning felt his chest grow tight, and his face changed. Such terrifying power. This level of power, makes me feel as though I cannot resist it whatsoever. It must be an immortal. Although he didn't feel confident in being able to fight a primal Daoist, he wouldn't feel as completely powerless as he did now. Thus, it should be an immortal. Ning and North Sun both walked out. North Sun waved his hand, and the entire construct estate was tucked away. At this moment in time, figures emerged from the stone and wooden houses as well. These were all people who wished to join the Rain Dragon Guard. Chapter 10, The Immortals of the Rain Dragon Guard Ning stared at his surroundings. During the past month, all of the immortal cultivators had remained in their own stone or wooden houses, training quietly. To them, training and waiting for a month was a very simple matter. Thus, during the past month, he hadn't really gotten to know any of them. A hundred. Ning's gaze swept past them, and he realized that the total number of figures who had emerged numbered exactly a hundred people. Ning then turned his gaze to the front. Up ahead, there were three figures who were staring at Ning and the other 99 who wished to join the Rain Dragon Guard. These three were led by a silver-haired, black-robed elder who carried a desolate, killing aura about him. When he swept his gaze past the prospective recruits, everyone, Ning included, felt an invisible pressure bear down upon them. It was as though a black dragon was staring at a crowd of ants. An immortal. Ning said silently to himself. The gaze of the silver-haired, black-robed elder flashed like the gleam of a weapon, causing them all to feel shock in their hearts. He suddenly spoke out. Your batch of a hundred immortal cultivators has been completed. Now, you can go to the wild marshes of the Jail Mountains. Ning and the rest of the hundred all listened carefully. You are not yet Rain Dragon Guards, the silver-haired, black-robed elder continued coldly. Thus, you were assigned to live in this desolate, backwater part of the mountain. Once you become true Rain Dragon Guards, you will naturally be permitted to enter the depths of the Crimson Dragon Mountains. As he spoke, he pointed towards the distance, to a peak of the Crimson Dragon Mountains. That place is the place where true Rain Dragon Guards reside. The Crimson Dragon Mountains aren't a place for pleasure, and it isn't as bustling as Stillwater City. The only thing we have here is the endless quiet. The silver-haired elder continued calmly, those who focus on training quietly will generally take over one of the cave estates of the Crimson Dragon Mountains and train within. The number of immortals who are currently training within the Crimson Dragon Mountains, is greater than 20. Once these words came out, Ning and the rest of the hundred immortal cultivators all felt their hearts clench tightly. The Rain Dragon Guard really did live up to its reputation as being one of the two titans of Stillwater Commandery. More than 20 immortals. Ning and North Sun were from the Black White College, which was ranked as the third greatest power. 
And yet, they now understood what a tremendous difference in power there was. Although the college had quite a few immortals, just the ones training in at the Rain Dragon Guard's base numbered over 20, much less the ones out on assignment or in the other branches spread throughout the Xia dynasty. In fact, some celestial immortals will occasionally come from the imperial capital to expound on the Tao for the Rain Dragon Guards present. The silver-haired elder swept his gaze forward. In terms of power, our division of the Rain Dragon Guard is comparable to the Northmont clan of Stillwater. In terms of our roots and background, however, the Rain Dragon Guard vastly outstrips them. So long as you can enter the Rain Dragon Guard, divine abilities, secret arts, and even the chance to head to the core of the Xia dynasty, the imperial capital, all these are possible. You might even have a chance to go to the main headquarters of the Rain Dragon Guard to learn and be trained. All of this, requires you to first join the Rain Dragon Guard. The silver-haired, black-robed elder stood there, waist as straight as a mountain, his voice reverberating sonorously in each person's inner heart. Now, each of you shall tell me of your history and your power. If you wish to join the Rain Dragon Guard, you must meet the minimum requirements of our Rain Dragon Guard. If you aren't even able to fulfill the minimum requirements, then there is no need for you to go to the Jail Mountains as Wild Marshes, you can just go back right now. Whoosh! Instantly, a bronze mirror floated up into the skies, hanging there. All of you, fully explain your histories and your level of strength. If you dare to lie at all, you will be killed without mercy. You. The silver-haired elder pointed towards a black-bearded youth, and the bronze mirror turned towards him. The black-bearded youth immediately said, Sky Splitter Sword Sect, Key Refiner, Middle Stage Wanxiang Adept, Bu Violet Sun. All right. The silver-haired elder nodded. Next. East River Clan, Key Refiner. Late Stage Wanxiang Adept, East River Cloud Soar. One practitioner after another began to reveal their histories. The Rain Dragon Guard would naturally want to learn about the backgrounds of those who came to join. After learning their backgrounds and names, given the intelligence networks of the Rain Dragon Guard, they would quickly be able to obtain detailed reports. Not a single person dared to lie. To lie in front of an immortal of the Rain Dragon Guard would be suicidal. You. The silver-haired elder pointed towards North Sun. North Sun answered, Black White College, Key Refiner. Middle Stage Wanxiang Adept, Mu North Sun. The Black White College? Someone from the Black White College came as well. Instantly, quite a few immortal cultivators began to pay attention to North Sun. Although they also came from extremely top-tier schools, sects, and extremely large clans that were on the same tier as the Black White College, those tribes and clans had many disciples and descendants. Every single member of the Black White College, however, was definitely a peerless genius. Not a single one of them was easily offended. You. The silver-haired elder looked towards Ning. Black White College, Key and Fiend God Body Dual Refiner. Ninth stage of the Crimson Bright Diagram of the Nine Heavens. G. Ning. Ning gave his response. The silver-haired elder gave Ning a surprised glance. For even an immortal to be surprised, the reactions of the other immortal practitioners went without saying. All of them were filled with boundless amazement and curiosity. To join the Rain Dragon Guard, generally speaking, the early Wanxiang Adept stage was a minimum requirement, but of course, if one trained in the legendary, number one fiend god body refining technique, the Crimson Bright Diagram of the Nine Heavens, one would be an exception. Being at the Zifu Disciple level would suffice. This situation, however, was extremely rare. Unexpectedly, today they managed to encounter someone who had trained to the ninth stage of the Crimson Bright Diagram of the Nine Heavens. The ninth stage of the Crimson Bright Diagram of the Nine Heavens is comparable to an ordinary early stage fiend god Wanxiang Adept. Upon using a divine ability, the power will definitely be significant, after all, he came from the Black White College. He's too rash. No matter what, he's only an early stage Wanxiang Adept. Since he didn't discuss his power as a key refiner, he hasn't reached the Wanxiang level in it either. He's a weak key refiner, and just barely qualifies as a fiend god body refiner, upon encountering a group of enemies, they will trample him to death. The immortal practitioners were all thinking this to themselves. 
Those who dared join the Rain Dragon Guard were all quite self-confident, and could be considered elites amongst their peers. Emm, -hmm, the silver-haired, black-robed elder looked towards Ning's reflection in the bronze mirror, then nodded slowly. You are indeed at the ninth stage. Next. The silver-haired, black-robed elder looked towards the next person. But, right at this moment. A voice suddenly echoed in Ning's mind. Your name is Ji Ning. The crimson bright diagram of the nine heavens has been publicly acclaimed since the fiend god era as the number one technique, and it has quite a few special aspects. Once you join the rain dragon guard, you'll learn how to better unleash your battle power as a fiend god. You must return from the wild marshes of the jail mountains alive, and actually, it'd be better if you waited until you reached the 10th stage or the 11th stage before going to the wild marshes. Then, you will definitely be incomparably safe. The silver-haired, black-robed elder even gave Ning a sidelong glance. Ning understood, this immortal of the Rain Dragon Guard was the one who had mentally sent him this message. Ning smiled towards this immortal of the Rain Dragon Guard, but he didn't hesitate at all. Clearly, his mind was set. Special? Ning pondered this statement. When I was in the underwater estate, the giant yellow bear also said that my fiend god body can be described as perfect, and capable of learning the star-seizing hand, which Daoist three lives left behind. In addition, even in the fiend god era, the crimson bright diagram of the nine heavens was publicly acclaimed as the number one fiend god body refining technique. It has spread so far, I imagine that it is quite easy to acquire. Even our G clan has a complete copy of the first scroll and the first nine stages of it. Ning had the feeling, as though there must be a tremendously powerful force which was propagating the crimson bright diagram of the nine heavens. In addition, this technique had been publicly acknowledged long ago. The Xia dynasty itself had only been established during the later periods of the fiend god era. This technique had existed even before the Xia dynasty's founding, and yet, the Xia dynasty actively propagated it. There must be some reason for this, Ning mused to himself. However, without question, this technique, as one which even the giant yellow bear praised, shouldn't have any problems. Since the technique itself has no problems, then for now, a kid like myself has no need to worry about the other reasons. This immortal of the Rain Dragon Guard said that there are some special aspects to it, and that after joining the Rain Dragon Guard, I'll learn how to truly unleash the combat potential of my divine body? Ning instantly grew rather eager. The Rain Dragon Guard was the most powerful military force of the entire Xia dynasty. It only made sense that it had some special secret arts. In terms of its roots and its background, the Rain Dragon Guard was naturally countless times superior to the Black White College. Not even the Marquis of Stillwater could compare to the entire Rain Dragon Guard. You. The silver-haired elder pointed to the final immortal cultivator. This man was dressed in a beautiful golden robe, and he said with respect, Snow Dragon Mountain, Key Refiner, Peak Wanxiang Adept, Dong Wan. Ning's ears twitched. He turned to look over towards him, and that immortal cultivator just so happened to be looking at Ning as well. Their gazes intersected. He knows me. Ning instantly realized this, when their gazes cross. The immortal cultivator named Dong Wan had a smile on his face, and he even nodded towards Ning. Ning just gave him a calm look, not smiling at all. His parents and uncle, in a way, had all died due to the disciples of Snow Dragon Mountain. How could Ning possibly smile when facing a disciple of Snow Dragon Mountain? Ning began to ponder in his heart. Why has this Wanxiang adept of Snow Dragon Mountain come here? Did he accidentally encounter me, or was he chasing after me deliberately? Previously, he had remained in Stillwater City this entire time, and so Snow Dragon Mountain didn't have any chance to take revenge on him. Was Snow Dragon Mountain pursuing him as soon as he had emerged? Their intelligence networks shouldn't be this good, Ning mused. In addition, I'm a disciple of the Black White College, and the personal disciple of an immortal. Snow Dragon Mountain shouldn't be so bold as to act in this way. It's possible that this is all just a chance meeting. Each person had finished describing their histories and strengths. The silver-haired, black-robed elder waved his hand. Instantly, streaks of light flew out towards each person. Ning stretched out his hand, 
Clasping it, it was a talisman. This is a talisman, the silver-haired, black-robed elder said. Bind it. Only then will you be able to enter the inner regions of the Crimson Dragon Mountains. The teleportation array within the inner region leads to the wild marshes of the Jail Mountains. If you haven't bound any talismans, the protective formation around the Crimson Dragon Mountains will not permit you to enter. Ning and the others didn't hesitate at all, as they all immediately bound the talismans. Go. The silver-haired, black-robed elder's body suddenly became shrouded by clouds which appeared out of nowhere, and the clouds lifted up and dragged Ning and the others away. However, the spirit beasts which some immortal cultivators had brought were all left behind. The test for entering the Rain Dragon Guard is a personal test. These spirit beasts are not to enter the wild marshes of the Jail Mountains, the silver-haired, black-robed elder said. Have them stay here for now. If you come back alive, you can seek them out. Ning stood there atop the clouds. He turned to look downwards towards the Whitewater Hound. Uncle White, wait for me, Ning sent mentally. Be careful, the Whitewater Hound sent back, looking towards Ning. And then, the silver-haired, black-robed elder led the group of immortal cultivators atop his clouds. They quickly flew away, moving deeper into the distant inner regions of the Crimson Dragon Mountains. Please subscribe to A7 English Podcasts and enjoy listening every day with us. Thank you.